Hi there, my name is Dan Scott and I'm an Adobe Certified Instructor for Illustrator here at Envato Tuts Plus. And together, you and me are gonna learn the basics of Adobe Illustrator. Now this course is for beginners. There is no need to have any previous knowledge in Adobe Illustrator or design or drawing or illustration. Okay, we're gonna start right at the beginning and work our way through step by step. During this course, we're gonna work through practical real world projects together, learning the tips and techniques necessary to make each of those projects happen. We'll start with the techniques that you'll need to create just about anything in Illustrator, including custom shapes, the wonderful shape builder, and the simple to use curvature tool. We'll explore lines and brushes. You'll master how to use and manipulate type. We'll use our new type skills to make our print flyer. We'll work through how to create your own custom logos and icons. I'll show you the sneaky secrets Illustrator has to discover and use beautiful colors and gradients. You'll learn how to push, pull, cut, and manipulate artwork like this. We'll take our drawings and make repeatable patterns like this. And I'll easily show you how to redraw these images in this vector style. Last but not least, we'll make sure that you can save and export your print and web documents like a professional. Also, throughout the course, I set lots of class exercises so that you can practice all the tips and tricks and techniques you're learning as you move through the course. So if you've never opened up Illustrator or you have and you struggled a little bit with it, follow me and I will show you how to make beautiful artwork in Adobe Illustrator. All right, uh, to get started, what you need to do is you need to download the exercise files. So there'll be a link on this page for source files. So look for the source files. In there is everything that we work on together during the course. Plus it has all of the things that I set for you as class examples. So at the end of a lot of the videos, I say, I kind of set some not homework, fun things to practice the skills you're learning. Um, when you finish those practice lessons, not homework, uh, I'd love to see them. So there's a couple of ways of sharing them. One is in the forum here on Envato Tuts Plus. So if you go to the forum and search for Adobe Illustrator for beginners, okay, and you'll be able to post uh, your exercises in there. The other thing you can do is, is tag us on social media. So post your examples uh, on Twitter. Uh, we are two things. We are Tuts Plus Design. And also personally, I am Dan Loves Adobe. So tag both of us. On Instagram, it's bring your own laptop. Okay, so yeah, share what you've done, share with the world, make sure you tag us so we can comment and look at it as well. Uh, the other thing to do is, or the next thing we need to do is we need to go through and just get our computers all looking the same. So yours looks like mine. And we're gonna reset the workspace and work on, make sure we've got the right units and increments and that sort of stuff to get started. So let's jump into the computer now and sort that out. First up, let's open up a file so that we can get our workspace similar. So your version of Illustrator looks the same as mine. Because the trouble sometimes with this first start screen here is it can be different for everybody. So let's go to File and let's go to Open. Now what you want to do is you want to find the exercise files you've downloaded. Here they're here, Exercise Files, Illustrator. And in here, I want you to find the file called Getting Started and then click the Open button. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to reset our workspace just so that we're all looking the same. And we can do it along the top here. There's this little app bar, okay? And yours might say something different in here, but, but drop this down. And what you wanna do is you wanna click on Essentials. You wanna see if there's a tick next to it. So click on it. And the second thing you wanna do is come down to that exact same menu and go to Reset Essentials. And that'll just put it back to kind of a default setting. Now, if yours still looks different, it might be that you're using an earlier version of Illustrator. And what that's gonna mean for you is that you can continue along with this course. Say 90% of the course is gonna be still fine for you. What you're gonna have a little bit of trouble with is finding out where some of these menus are because they've moved around just a tiny bit. What I mean by that, if I grab my type tool and I click and I start typing, you can see over here it automatically says, here's my character panel and there's my font and font sizes. This properties panel did not exist in earlier versions of Illustrator. Super handy, I love it. But in earlier versions, what you're gonna have to do is when I'm looking at this character panel or things in this appearance, what you're gonna have to do is go up to window and open them separately. This is how older versions worked. If I go down to type, there's character. Okay, so it's the same panel, can you see? He matches him, but he's just in this separate little window. So that's gonna be a fun game if you're using, say, CS6 or CS5. 
but don't worry, you can continue on with most of this course. So just make sure you've set to essentials and that you've reset them. Next thing, let's look at the units and increments. Now to change the units you're using, what you need to do is have nothing selected. The best way to have nothing selected is grab your black arrow, the selection tool here, and just click off in this gray area here just so that nothing is selected. Watch when I select on something, this properties panel changes, but when I click on the background here into kind of like no man's land, it gives me general overall settings for the document. In this case, it's currently set to centimeters. Okay, I'm gonna change mine and work in inches in this course. But let's say we're working, say, with some web or UI design work in Illustrator. You can click on pixels. It doesn't really matter, but this is the place to change it. It's in a slightly different place than, say, a lot of the other Adobe products like Photoshop or InDesign where it's kind of done in the preferences. So that's just something to note here. So I'm going to pick inches. One last thing we'll do before we move on to start making things is just some basic navigation. We'll cover a lot more during the course, but zooming in and out and moving around is quite important. So there is a long way. You can use this, see this little magnifying glass here, the zoom tool, click on that and you click once, click twice, okay, and it just keeps zooming in. To zoom out, you can hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. So to look down your keyboard, if you're using a Mac, it's the Option key. If you're a PC, it's the Alt key. And you can see, see the little icon changes from a plus to a minus, and then I just click again with my left mouse button. Okay, and it just zooms out. So that's the long way. What you'll find is I'm not gonna cover too many shortcuts really early on, but the one everyone uses to zoom in and out is on a Mac, hold down your Command key and tap plus. If you're on a PC, hold down the control key and tap plus. Okay, so plus is just up and your numbers kind of along the top of your keyboard, there's a plus and a minus. So minus zooms out, plus zooms in. One last little bit of navigation is to move around, say I wanna see kind of down a bit further. See these little sliders on the side here? Okay, it'll look a little different on a PC, but there'll be a little kind of a slider bar that you can go up and down. Same with down the bottom here, you can go left and right. Okay, that is the long painful way. That is fine when you're new, you can do that way. But let's do one last little shortcut is if you hold down the space bar, can you see at the moment I'm on my selection tool? Okay, but if I hold space bar down, look at the icon that changes, becomes a little hand. Okay, so space bar down becomes a little hand and that just means click, hold and drag. Okay, so space bar down, clicking the mouse and just dragging it around. All right, that's it for the boring navigation stuff in Illustrator. I will remind you of those shortcuts throughout the course, so don't worry. But now, boring stuff over, let's get into the super exciting world of creating things in Illustrator using shapes and lines. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, in this video, we are going to set up our documents so that we can start redrawing this cute little sheriff penguin using all our shapes. So we're gonna create a new document, show you how to bring in and use layers to lock this pencil drawing in the background so that we can redraw over the top of it. All right, let's get started. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new document to draw our penguin on. Let's go to File, Let's go to new. Now in here we've got a bunch of presets. Okay, along the top here you've got, like if you wanna design a mobile phone, kind of a website, we're gonna start with print. Okay, and in here we're gonna pick letter, and along here we're gonna change our units to inches. We're gonna make a landscape, and what you'll find is yours is probably twirled up down the bottom here. See where it says advanced options, click on that word, and this little extra option opens up. Okay, and we'll change our color mode to RGB. And we're not gonna cover the full differences between RGB and CMYK, but just so you know, if you're new, RGB gives you a bigger color field, okay, more richer colors. CMYK is a little bit more washed out. But if you're going to eventually become a commercial illustrator or commercial designer using Illustrator, you probably need to research a little bit more the differences between the two. But the short version is just use RGB. Even if you're going to commercial print, printers have some amazing software to convert it to RGB, which they need, and often it can give you a better result. So RGB, perfect for pretty much all circumstances these days. Let's click Create. All right, next thing we're gonna do is save our document. So next up, let's go to File and let's save our document. And what I wanna do is, now if you're on a Mac like I am, okay, you might have to click this little arrow to see a few more of the options here. Okay, if you're on a PC, things are very similar, but a little different, okay? Now, depending on your ability, um, you might just save it onto your desktop and just leave it at that. What I'm gonna do is be very organized and click on new folder, and I'm gonna put it into here called class files. Okay, I'm gonna put a folder on my desktop called class files. I'm gonna call this one my penguin. I'm not even sure if that's how you spell penguin. Looks good enough for me. So if we're on our PC, it's slightly different. I think there's just an icon along the top here that says like new folder, hover above them. Create a new folder called class files, name our document penguin, and let's click save. 
Okay, these illustrator options, just leave them all by default and click OK. So to get started, what we've got is I've drawn, hand drawn our penguin and we're gonna redraw over the top of it. And that's a really common way that I work and a lot of illustrators work is that it's easier to draw on my notebook, take a photo of it or a scan and actually just draw over the top of it in Illustrator. It's not how everyone works. You can go straight into Illustrator, but it's gonna give us at least a template to draw over the top of just to make it a bit easier for us now. So to make that happen, let's go to file and let's go to place. Place is the word, it's interchangeable with import. Illustrator likes to call it place though. So file, place, we'll bring in our image. Let's find the exercise files that you've downloaded. And in there should be one called penguin.jpg. Now, before you click place, what we're gonna do is click on this word template. I'll show you what it does. Let's make sure template is clicked. Let's click place. And what ends up happening is with my black arrow, if I click off in the background, can you see I can't move this image? So what it does is it brings it in, it puts it on its own layer, it locks that layer and dims it down a little bit so it's easier to draw over the top of. Now mine's put it in the middle of this document. Um, it really, yours is probably off to the side here a little bit. So let's look at kind of unlocking that layer and moving it around. So up here in your layers panel, layer one is where we're gonna do our drawing. This layer here called template, you can kind of see template penguin. What it's done is it's created a layer and has locked it. Okay, so it means I can't move it around, which is super handy. But let's say I want to move it over a little bit. Let's click on the locking icon. Click on this now. Now, okay, using my black arrow, just clicking and dragging the center anywhere. Okay, now it's unlocked. Okay, so hopefully you can see the benefits of using that template. I can lock it again now. Go back to my layer one. Okay, make sure it is highlighted and I can do my drawing on that layer. And this helpful little layer is just underneath, dimmed down a little bit, the opacity is down a little bit and it's locked, making it easy to draw. All right, so that's it for setting up our document, just getting it ready for drawing over the top of. What we'll do in the next video is that we'll start drawing with our shapes, okay, lines and rectangles to make our cute little penguin that for some unknown reason is a sheriff, mainly because I needed to show you how to draw a star. But let's do that in the next video. Hi there, in this video we are going to redraw this pencil penguin, okay, over the top using shapes and lines using Illustrator, we'll turn them off and yeah, it's our short little squat penguin, but look how happy he is. All right, let's get started. All right, to get started, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our rectangle tool over here in my toolbar. If you can't see the rectangle tool, it might be that if you click and hold this kind of where this option might be, it might be set to something like the ellipse tool and to change it back to the rectangle tool, all you do is click hold, 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 until these options appear. And then just click on the rectangle tool. Also to get started, just make sure you're on your layers panel and make sure you're on layer one. In your properties panel, I wanna make sure we're gonna change our fill and stroke. The fill is the center color of our rectangle and the stroke is the line around the outside. So what you do is you click on this first little icon, doesn't matter what color it is currently, pick a random color, Okay, um, and because we're gonna change it in a second, but I just wanted you to get used to it. Then you can click back on this icon to close it back up. And in the stroke, click on this and just make sure it's set to black. Then click, you don't actually have to click back on this. You can just click anywhere and it closes back down. And I wanna make sure that the stroke is set to one point. Okay, it's just a nice thin line that goes around the outside. So let's draw a random rectangle. Don't worry if it doesn't kind of line up. We're gonna use it for the body of our penguin. So you can see the fill is the center color and the stroke is the line around the outside. What you might see is this kind of like faint blue line or a red line depending on your computer. What it means is it just means it's got it selected. So if we grab our black arrow, this is your kind of like safety uh, tool. Always go back to your black arrow if you're not too sure what to do. You know, you've got all these selected, just go back to the black arrow. It's the, it's the one you're gonna use the most. And what you can do is click in the background here. So I just clicked once and it deselected our rectangle. You can see the stroke around the outside a lot clearer. So it just goes blue when we have it selected. So what I'd like to do is, I like to keep the black line, but not the fill. To do it, you have to have it selected. So black arrow, click it in the middle anywhere. And over here, click on fill. And to have none, see this little red line here? If you hover above it, it tells you, but that means I want nothing in there, please. And I'm just gonna click in the background to close that little fill panel. Great, so I've got a line around the outside, but no fill. And what you'll notice is it's a little bit different to select. So I click in the background now. What happens is if I click and click the center, you can see it just doesn't work like it did when it was filled with green, because there is no center now. So if I wanna select this rectangle now, I've gotta click the edge once. So black arrow, click the edge and it should be selected. Now what I'd like to do is using these white squares, 
Okay, I just want you to resize it, okay, so that it kind of matches the edges of our little penguin here. All right, not very exciting. Let's get into this slightly more exciting when we start looking at the corners. So black arrow, make sure the edge of it's selected. You see these little targets in the corners. These are called corner options. And all they do is click, hold, and drag it with your mouse. Just drag it towards the center of the rectangle. Cool, huh? So it's making all the corners nice and rounded. Okay, so that's kind of what I want. It's got the top, but not the bottom. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this thing called edit, and we're gonna use undo. It just goes back one step. Okay, undo to undo what you did. Okay, and it keeps going back. You can keep hitting undo right back to the beginning of the document. You can also redo it. Now I'm gonna use the shortcuts throughout this course because it's a really common thing to do, go to undo. And on my Mac, it's command Z. On a PC, it should be control Z. Okay, or you can just go up to that long way, it's fine. What I'd like to do is I would like to have just one of the corners selected. So look at this little icon here, take note of the color. If I click it once, you can see it's kind of changed, it's inverted. So it's kind of selected when the other ones are not. What I mean by that is if you click and drag that one now, okay, so you click it once and then click and drag it, you can see it just affects that one. I could do the same here, click him once, he goes to that alternate color. Now I click and drag him. Okay, I can kind of just work with these individual corners. Now my radius is a little bit different on both sides. So what I'd like to do is go to edit, undo, edit, undo again. So it's back to being a square and I'm gonna show you how to click both of them. So you select the first one, like we did before, just click it once with the black arrow. But if you hold your shift key down on your keyboard, shift key is gonna play a pretty big part in Illustrator. Okay, so hold down shift, click on the second one. It means that I can select more than one at a time. So these guys at the bottom aren't selected, these guys at the top. If I grab one of them, click, hold, drag it, they both come along for the right. Now I know they match. And the last minute change to my design, I'm gonna click this bottom one once and just tuck it up. I wanted to have like a little bit of a penguin belly. <laughs> he was a bit stumpy before, he's still stumpy. But anyway, you don't have to follow exactly. So we learned what fill and stroke is. Strokes around the outside, fills in the middle, and we looked at these corner options. Let's start building some other parts. Let's draw the circle for his kind of eye there. So click hold, keep holding down your mouse and release, and then release on this ellipse tool. So. With the ellipse tool, um, what we're gonna do is click and drag over here. And what you'll notice is I can click and drag any sort of size. So that's fine, kind of any sort of weird size. I'm gonna undo a few times. What I'd like to do is I want it to be a perfect circle. Okay, that shift is a really kind of usable tool. So when I start dragging out, if I hold down the shift key while I'm doing it, you can see it locks the height and width. And that's true of rectangles or stars, polygons, circles, Okay, so I'm gonna get it to roughly the right size. I'm gonna grab my black arrow. I'm gonna click either the edge, or if you can see this dot here, grab the dot. Okay, the little center. If you've got it the wrong size, okay, say it's just still too big, and you try to line it up, and you're like, eh, it's kinda of close. Okay, what you can do is you can resize it. Just like we did before is that I can grab any of these little guys in the corner. The trouble with resizing it this way is you can see I'm kind of distorting the shape. So what I want to do is before I do it, so I've undone a couple of times, is if I hold the shift key and grab any of the corners, doesn't matter which corner it is, okay, it will lock the height and width like we did when we created the circle. Okay, so holding shift just kind of locks the height and width until I get to a rough size. Now my circle's not perfect, okay, so don't worry too much about it. Another thing you can do here is if you're finding that you're trying to line it up and it's like jumping all around, okay, get it close to where you want it. And then with your keyboard, so I've got my black arrow, look down at your keyboard, you've got your up, down, left, right, your cursors. Okay, so I'm just using my cursor arrow keys just to kind of tap it around a little bit. Okay, a little bit left, a little bit up. That often can be a nicer way just to kind of do fine adjustments in Illustrator. All right, let's do this little upside down curve. It makes him the happy content <laughs> penguin. But he seen Pingu? Anyway, he's my inspiration for this one. So what we wanna do is I could draw a curve. There's lots of ways of doing curves. There's this really easy way though, is if you click and hold down, so hold, hold, hold down the line segment tool, there's an arc tool, okay? So with the arc tool, just draw it anywhere out here. It doesn't really matter too much which way it goes because we can rotate it. So do it so it's kind of a nice curve-ish. And what I'd like to do is go back to my black arrow. Remember, this is our default go back to it tool. And it does so many things. We used it to resize the circle a second ago. We can also use it to rotate. Now, what we need to do is we need to zoom in a little bit. So who remembers what the shortcut was? You remember, right? It's Command Plus on a Mac or Control Plus on a PC. So just zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna show you why in a second. Um, to rotate this thing, we need to be in a kind of a special zone. So when we were resizing it before, remember we held Shift and we dragged this up 
and down to make it kind of bigger and smaller. The rotation's very close. So clicking on the corner and dragging resizes it. But watch this, if I move my cursor just a bit further out into this kind of like, so too close, nope. Perfect, too far. Perfect, too far. This is kind of like every corner has this kind of like uh, rotation zone in it. And you'll wiggle your mouse around and hopefully find it. You're looking for that kind of bent arrow. And if you click, hold and drag there, just click, hold, drag your mouse, it'll start moving it around. Okay, and just kind of find it again, drag it around until it's kind of a curve that you could use for an eye. Now I wanna move down a little bit. I could use these little sliders, they're fine. What's the shortcut? You remember, spacebar, click, hold and drag. Okay, and just move it down. And mine's way too big, so I'm holding shift. I'm just kind of rotating it around a bit. Don't worry if it's not the right perfect curve. We're gonna, we're gonna show you different ways of doing it in a second, but yeah, it's close enough. Drag it in in the corner. Using my arrow keys just to line it up perfectly. So to draw nice, good looking curves, you can use the arc tool. You can rotate it by that little special area kind of just outside the uh, scaling part. Okay, just out a bit further, that's rotation. Next thing we'll look at is we'll look at the stroke. This stroke, uh, if I click off in the background, it's pretty thin. I want it to kind of be nice and thick in the inside here because it's a bit more of a design feature. So I'm gonna select it once with my black arrow. And over here, okay, where it says stroke, I'm going to use this little up arrow. You can drop this down and pick, uh, pick one, or you can just use the up arrow just to click and pick a size. I'm gonna pick four point. For no good reason, just looks thick enough. And that looks fine, I'm gonna click off in the background, and I've got this kind of like rainbow kind of shaped thing. What I'd like it to do is I'm gonna eventually round all these corners, just uh, the theme I'm going for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you click on the stroke here, we're gonna look at um, the what's called capping. Capping is the end here. Can you see it's a straight line? I would like it to be like a little bulbous end. Okay, so I'm gonna click on it once. Over here, our stroke, we don't have many options, right? We have color and we have the size of it. But if you click on the word stroke, ta-da, there's all sorts of nerdy stuff in there. Okay, so what we're gonna do in this case is, it's called the capping, the unfortunately named butt cap, and then there's a second one, the round cap. Click on that, we will keep straight face, right? Butt cap. The second one, round cap, is kind of what we want, right? It's kind of this nice, more gentle end on it. Okay, this one here, the last one, I don't use projecting cap, kind of just the, the butt cap versus projecting cap. You can kind of see what it does. It puts it like a square on the outside, but I'm gonna use rounded cap. That can really help you later on when you're working with Illustrator and you've got some really like ugly edges or ends of strokes. Just switching them to rounded cap can like finish them off nicely. We'll look at stroke a little bit more in another video, but that's it for now. Let's click off in the background, click off. Happy smiley, content penguin. All right, next up we'll do some triangles. So I wanna do the beak, I wanna do the uh, flipper, his <laughs> wing, I don't know, penguins, uh, and his tail. So they're all kind of triangles with rounded edges. So to do a triangle is you hold down the ellipse tool or the rectangle tool, and you're gonna move to this one called the polygon tool. So a triangle is essentially a polygon, just a three-sided one. By default, you're gonna get a pentagon. I don't know, I'm not sure what that one is, but I'm gonna delete it using my delete key on my keyboard. What I wanna do is just click once instead of dragging out, and it gives you the polygon options. So I've got the polygon tool selected, and I just click once on my screen, and it gives you some options before you start drawing. And I'm gonna pick three sides, please. Not gonna worry about the radius for the moment. I'm gonna resize it once I'm done. So three sides, click okay, and I get this kind of giant triangle. So first up, let's resize it and rotate it. So I'm gonna use my black arrow, make sure it's selected by clicking the edge of it. I'm gonna make sure it has no fill, make sure it has a black stroke, and I'm not too worried about the size of it just yet. So to resize it and rotate it, resizing, remember, is just grabbing this corner bit here and just getting it down to a size. Rotating it is that magical area around the outside. Now what you might wanna do is, at the moment when you're rotating, it just kinda of goes around in random degrees. If you hold shift, remember that magical tool? Okay, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and you start rotating it. Can you see it does it in 45 degree increments? You might want your uh, nose to be that sort of shaped. So clicking the either the center or the edge, move it around, get it into position, resize it, rotate it around so you've got a nose. It doesn't have to be the same as my nose. I wanted mine to be flat on the bottom. So I'm gonna try and rotate it using the magical rotation. Make sure it's big enough. Get it to overlap quite a bit in the back here. Okay, I'll show you why in a second. Arrow keys just to tab it down. 
drag it so it overlaps a bit more. Why? Because I want to change the kind of aroundness on the end. Okay, so I'm going to grab this little corner option, the little target there, and drag it in. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Drag that corner in. You can see it done to all sides. You could do our secret trick, remember, where you click on it once and just do it individually, but it's a little bit easier just to hide these in here. We're going to make both the nose black and his little body black. So I want to reuse this. I'm going to have it selected. Okay, with my black arrow, and go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Okay, and I'm going to put this down here. There you go. Messing about. That looks like a good flipper to me. Copy and paste it again. I am going to rotate it around. I just use Command C and Command V on a Mac. You can use Control C and Control V on a PC. There we go. Now you'll notice I'm trying to line it up down the bottom here. It does some clever stuff where it tries to like automatically line up. If yours is not doing that, it's called Smart Guides. It's under View. And you can see my Smart Guides is turned on. It's got a little tick next to it. Okay, it just means it tries to line things up automatically for you. And that's super handy. It can also be a bit of a pain as well. So you can go to View and untick it if you're not liking all that jumping around lining up stuff. Some people don't. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is this body. I should have done it earlier. Again, when we had the rectangle tool, but I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to hover. You can kind of see it says path. That just means I'm going to start bang on the edge of his body here. It's really handy. It's one of those smart guides. Okay, I'm going to say click, hold, and drag. I get my rectangle. Don't worry too much about the stroke around the outside. And remember, black arrow. I'm going to grab this guy, click him once, drag him down to match. And same with this one. I'm going to click him and drag him up to match my... That's probably why I didn't do the little belly earlier on. I'm just adding more kind of things that could go wrong for us. So I'm going to try and line it up. Actually, I'm going to bring it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> That's why I didn't do it. So we've got the body. Let's do the feet as well. So I'm going to do the foot with a rectangle tool. Grab just that corner with my black arrow. I don't actually have to go to my black arrow. It's just a good habit to get into. Click on it once. Drag it down. What I'm going to do is copy and paste them. So Command C, Command V, two of them. And I'm going to try and line them up. It's pretty good at lining them up depending on which corner you grab it. So you'll notice that if I grab the center here, oh, it intersects. Very good. Nice. He's got two little feet at the bottom. All right, let's look at a couple of the other drawing tools. Uh, we're going to use just the regular old straight line, okay, the line segment tool. Uh, it's a fancy word for just drawing a line. And um, all you do is click, hold, and drag. Okay, click, hold, and drag. Those are two little, I'm not even sure what they are, little feathers out the back of his head, but um, what I'd like to do as well is change the width of this. Okay, I'm gonna match maybe this. So I'm gonna remember it was four point, I think we used for that. And we changed the capping. Okay, so what I wanna do is do both at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is go to edit, undo, undo until it was kind of back to the same shape it was. So like we did with the corner options, we can select more than one at a time. And it's that same key. So I have my black arrow, I have the first one selected. Then I hold down shift and click in the middle of the second one. So I have both of them selected at the same time. Now over here in stroke, I'm gonna say I'd like you to be four point. And under stroke, I'd like to change from that one <laughs> to that one. All right, let's look at the last, well, last kind of new thing I wanna show you. We'll draw that, we'll draw the rectangles and stuff for the water and the weeds. But this one here, why did you get a sheriff badge is, it's <laughs> only purely so I could show you how to draw a star and a polygon. Okay, you know how to draw a polygon probably. Okay, click hold uh, the rectangle tool. We saw it before, polygon. And it remembers the last setting. So the last time we used it, we said be three sides. So it's kind of defaulting to that now. So what we're gonna do is remember just click once out here, put it back to what it was, which was five sides. Click okay, and we get our pentagon, I think. Octagon, no, pentagon. I wanna lock in pentagon. Okay, and I magically got mine the right size. If you don't remember, grab the edges here, hold down shift while you're dragging those edges. It will lock the height and width and just kind of move it in by grabbing the edges. Okay, here we go. If it's the wrong fill and the wrong stroke with it selected, you can go and change the fill to none in the stroke there. Let's do our star. So the star is that there is an actual star tool. So click and hold down the this little kind of shape group and grab the star tool. And if you click hold and drag out, you'll get just a regular star. To adjust the star, 
I'm gonna undo it, click once, and you can decide on how many points it has and how pointy they are. Just mess around with the different radiuses to experiment with it, it's hard to describe. But mine one's fine the way it was, I'm gonna leave everything by itself, I'm gonna cancel and just draw out a star. Now to lock it into like a perfect kind of horizontal and vertical, hold shift. Remember that magical tool. When in doubt, probably hold down shift. Grab the black arrow, click hold and drag, get it close, hold down shift, grab one of the corners, drag it out. We're getting good at this, right? All right, what I'd like to do is make sure that you, it will try its very best to line these perfectly. Okay, if you're like, I know it's not aligned perfectly. So what you can do is select both of them. Remember our trick, have the star selected. Which key do you hold down? That's right, shift key. Click the center of this uh, pentagon. And what you'll see over the side here is that you've got your align options. So I wanna make sure they're aligned horizontally center and vertically center. And they are perfect already. <laughs> Let's, I'm gonna move mine off, hold shift, grab both of them, just to show you what it actually does. Now they are perfectly centered, so I'm just gonna kind of move mine way off so it makes it a bit more clearer what we're doing. So I'm gonna make sure it's horizontally centered and vertically centered. I can never remember which is which, so I just click both. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it. I've got them both selected. And I'm gonna hold down shift key. I want them to be a lot smaller. So spacebar to move along, grab the one of the edges, hold down shift to get it to a kind of a, I don't know, sheriff badge size. All right, last couple of things we're gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can put in, that is meant to be the ground and that is meant to be the water, <laughs> if you weren't sure. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool, I'm gonna click, hold and drag, and I'm gonna get close to this edge and it's gonna go wow. That happens all the time where you kind of just get close to it and illustrate a kind of, I don't know, you get lost this way. So I've got this giant rectangle. To get back, okay, we can go to view and just go to the one that says fit all in window. Kind of gets you back to home base. Command zero on your keyboard, okay, on a Mac or control zero on your keyboard is a really common shortcut to do the same thing. Otherwise, just go to view and go to the one that says fit upward to window or fit all to window. Okay, we'll get back to here. I'm gonna delete with my keyboard or go to undo to get rid of the giant rectangle. And I'm gonna draw one that kind of goes just to the edges here. Another one. And I'm gonna draw in my circles. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit with the circles. I'm gonna draw a circle, zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna copy and paste it instead of drawing lots of them. And then resize them. It's not even cheating. <laughs> it takes just as long. Uh, maybe even just easier drawing them. Holding shift member to get a perfect circle. Yeah, okay, that first way is easier. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some color. Well, actually, forgot the tuft of grass. I'm just gonna use my, remember, the arc tool. So you go arc tool. It's gonna be a bit of rotation going on. So, uh, maybe not. That'll do. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right, we're gonna come back and look at strokes in a bit more detail to maybe give these a little bit more prettiness, but for the moment, that's gonna do for me. What I'd like to do is add some fill colors, because at the moment he's, I don't know, weird shapes and sizes, so we're gonna have to work our way through, adding fills, mess, messing with strokes, resizing strokes, grouping, arranging, and we'll do all of that in the very next video. All right, I'll see you there. Hi there, this video we're gonna take our drawing from the last video and do this to them. We're gonna color them in, but along the way we're gonna learn how to use grouping, arranging, what isolation mode is, all sorts of fun stuff. Let's get started. All right, let's look at grouping, arranging. We're also gonna color them in. If that sounds real simple, hang around because there's things like isolation mode that you really need to understand before moving on. All right, so first up, let's turn off our trace layer. Okay, it was useful for getting us here, but we don't need it anymore. So under your layers panel, let's just turn the eyeball off. Okay, or this like little icon here, the first icon in the layers panel, we don't need it anymore. You can click on it and hit the trash can way down the bottom here. Okay, and that'll just get rid of it. Um, I'm just gonna leave mine there, I'm gonna undo. Just turn it off. So let's first of all look at grouping and then isolation mode. So I'm zooming in, I want to do a couple of things. I want to grab my pentagon and I want to give it a uh, Black fill, so I'm gonna click on fill, make it black. I'm gonna give the stroke a none color. We have a small problem as in our star. You can see if I use my black arrow, I can just hover above and eventually find my star by just clicking the little blue line that appears. It's there, but because it's black on black and it has no center, 
it can't be seen. So let's have a look at fixing that. So stroke, I don't want any stroke on it. And the fill, I would like this option here for white. Cool. So I want to group these two. So I need to select both of them. So I'm going to click the, sometimes you can't click both. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. It makes it a little easier to click individual items when they're really close. So I've clicked on my pentagon. Okay, I'm going to hold shift and click on my star. So I've got them both selected. So what I want to do is group them so that they kind of stick together. Okay, so I can go up to object and go to this one that says group. There is at the top. All that means now is if I click off in the background and I click back on just either one of them, they're both kind of connected. It's not forever. Okay, I can go to select and go to ungroup and that will separate them up again. But that's how to group them. Grouping is handy. One thing you will run into is something called isolation mode. And this is where most people get lost in Illustrator. The people that I teach, quite a few of them are double clickers. They love double clicking stuff. So what happens is, I don't know, we know from lots of programs you gotta double click things. But if you double click things in Illustrator, everything goes wrong. So watch this, if I double click the star, double click. Okay, what happens is it's weird. The background grays out and I can't, I can still work on these guys, but I can't work on the background anymore. All that's happened is you've entered something called isolation mode. Um, the way to really tell is up the top here, can you see this thing? This gray bar here didn't appear before. I'm going to go back out of it by clicking this arrow twice. Okay, so I'm back out of it. Watch that. It. It'll appear up here. I'll move <laughs> so it's easier to see. If I double click on this, I this little bar appears and everything else that's not in that group is kind of blanked out. Why do we have it? It's mainly to confuse everybody that I'm teaching, but it actually has a really good use. It means that when I'm back out of here, so I've got these things two together, but I want to kind of move them. I want the star in a different position to the pentagon. So instead of going to ungroup and then moving around and then regrouping them, what you can do is just double clicking them and think of it as going inside that group. We've kind of dived inside. Everything else is grayed out. It's not important now. We're inside this group. Okay, now these guys are separate again. So I can go, actually, I want my star to be, I don't know why, but <laughs> you want it down there. And what means is I can click this arrow to go back to layer one and then all the way out to exit isolation mode. Just keep smashing away at that little arrow until it goes away. And now there's still a group Okay, but you are able to dive inside and change it. So I'm going to dive inside again, grab it, stick it back roughly in the middle. Roughly enough, I'm going to select both of them and arrange them. And again, you can keep clicking on the arrow to go back or double click the background. That kind of jumps you out like a bit of a quicker shortcut. So if you ever get lost and think you're like, man, that thing's not working, it's not locked, or um, from inside of here, you can see a lot of these things don't work. These menu items, they're all grayed out because we're in this kind of like special world, isolation mode. Double click the background to come out, and everything will come back to normal. So if you're lost, click the arrow or double click the background and you can come out. Hopefully you can see the use of isolation mode. Let's look at another thing. So I'm gonna work on both of these little feet here. I'm gonna click on this. We're gonna click the edges member of this foot. I'm gonna click fill. I'm gonna pick an orange just randomly from in here. And I'm gonna have stroke of none. I'm gonna click this fella this other foot, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I need a slightly darker orange. Okay, and I'm gonna have a stroke of none. Now the trouble is, is that this one that I want kind of at the back, is in front of my front foot. Just because I drew him last, okay? Whatever you draw ends up on top of the last things. So what I can do is I can select them, I can go to arrange, and I can go to send to back. There you go. That's how to arrange things. We're gonna do lots of arranging now to kind of get the layer order all right. You can use layers, but in Illustrator, unlike something like Photoshop, you generally only have one layer that you work on. You can have more, but because these are all kind of individual vector objects in Illustrator, it allows you just to kind of arrange them, and bring them to the front. If you want this guy at the front now, I can click on arrange and say bring to the front. Arrange and send it back. One other really useful thing to know before we go through and start coloring this stuff is that, watch this, if I grab my penguin, I'm just grabbing all the penguin bits. Okay, so I've just dragged a box. Instead of holding shift, okay, and shift clicking at all, that would work. Okay, it'll be there for a long time. What you can do with your black arrow and just click, hold, and drag a box kind of roughly around. Can you see I haven't covered the feet because I don't want that uh, rectangle at the bottom, which is my ground. I'm going to go just above there. And because I've overlapped those last little objects, it should select them all. That's one way of doing it. What I'd like you to do is, by default, I can't exactly remember whether it's on or off. I'm going to show you both ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this down. So I've got everything selected. I'm going to hold my shift so it scales it proportionally. Grab the corner. I'm going to scale it right down to be a teeny tiny version of my penguin. Something weird happens, right? <laughs> okay, all of the strokes are, they don't scale down proportionately. Okay, that is still like a nice solid, where's my eye in the middle? Maybe we made him four point, he's still four point. So I'm going to undo. So there's going to be times where you need that to scale down. We want these strokes just to remain the exact size you told them to be. 
So to do that, let's click off in the background. We've got nothing selected. There's this option here that says Scale, Stroke, and Effects. Okay, so with nothing selected, you can turn on and off. You'll be turning it on and off reasonably. For me, I turn it on and off quite often. Okay, so I've got it off. I'm going to drag and grab all of these guys. I'm going to shrink them right down. To be a little mini penguin, and you see all the strokes came along for the right. Other than to see tiny penguin, <laughs> I only wanted to show you that little technique, okay, before we move on. So I'm gonna undo, so he's back to his regular size. When would you want to use this? Let's say that you're drawing something that's a bit more, say it's a, you're a fashion designer and you need like a stitch, okay? And you need to resize it, but you need that stitching detail to stay the same. Or say you're drawing, like I've taught urban planners, this Illustrator gets used by lots of different people. Say this is a road, okay? And this is another road. Say these are not feathers, these are roads, okay? And I wanna scale them up and down, but I want them to keep the same thickness to match everything else that's in my document. Okay, so I wanna scale it up and down, but I wanna retain the thickness. But most of the time, have nothing selected, just make sure it's on. That's, I bet you probably 70% of the time, you're just gonna to need to leave it on. But no, that's where it is. When you wanna scale it down, you can turn it off and it will keep its stroke size. All right, we're gonna work through and color this fella using our newfound grouping arranging techniques. I'm gonna click on the body. I'm gonna say you've, my friend, have got a fill of black and a stroke of white. Actually, I might do him last because he kind of makes these a little bit harder to use. So I'm gonna click on him. I'm gonna hold shift and click on the eye because I wanna do the same thing. I want them both to have a white center and no stroke, please. Awesome. I'm gonna click on the body and I want the body to have a fill of white. And nope, I want it to have a fill of black and I'd like to have no stroke. Okay, so my alignment's actually working out fine, except for my little uh, flipper here. You can kind of see him. So it's a little bit hard to find that flipper. I can kind of roll around and I eventually find him. And that's actually probably just perfect. Click on him and I can say, you, my friend, have a fill of black, a stroke of white. And I want to bring you to the front by going to arrange and say, bring to front. Another way to do it, I'm going to undo. Okay, so I can't see it right. There is a kind of a skeleton view you can use. It's called outline. If you go to view and go to this one that says outline, okay, it's a common thing to use, command Y, okay, or control Y. Can you see it's just like a really wireframe version? So you can do things like actually click on him because he's easy to see in this view. I can go to arrange, bring him to front, then go to view and it, so can you see command Y toggles between GPU view, which is not a sexy way of calling it, but it's just toggles outline, GPU, outline, GPU. So I do that quite a bit. If I lose something, I'm like, hmm, I'm pretty sure there was a flipper here somewhere. I can just go to Command Y on my Mac or Control Y on my PC and just kind of select them. So I'm going to grab you. I'm going to give him a no stroke. I want you to be the same. You are going to have no stroke and a black fill, my little beak. I'm going to grab you, who are nicely grouped, my little sheriff's badge. Penguin, you notice I kind of did, I should have selected all of these in one go because they're all doing the same thing. I can do another little trick is, can you see this little eyedropper tool here? Okay, it's this eyedropper tool. So to make it work, I have this selected, okay, the outside of it, grab my eyedropper tool and then click on the middle of my beak here and it goes and steals the same setting. So it changes the fill and the stroke to match it. It's a handy little advanced one. All right, what I might do is I might grab this, this is gonna be a fill of, some sort of gray thing here. And I'm gonna show you a few other color options. So gray, I'm not sure why it's gray, it's ice, or I just want a really monochromatic design. This edge of this for the water, what I'm gonna do is, say you've got these presets in here, okay? Just, these are pre-mixed, they're called swatches. Adobe has just said, these are the ones, these are some defaults, and they're good. But say you want your own custom color. See this little icon here, color mixer? Okay, it gives you the option down the bottom for this thing here called the RGB spectrum. And it's just a little rainbow color thing. Click anywhere on it, and it's the tip of the little eyedropper will be the color. So you can pick any old color you like. Move it around. Pick any old color, Dan, come on. That's gonna work for me-ish. No, a bit more green. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the strokes on these guys. Same with you. Goodbye stroke. And now I'm just messing around. You can skip through to the next video now. I'm gonna go through and color all of these, holding shift to grab them all. Here we go. I'm gonna go fill of white. Now remember, if you wanna go back to the swatches, click on this first one. And I'm gonna have a stroke of none. 
I'm going to put in a little bit of a background color because I want to see my white belly a little bit better. So I'm going to put in, uh, you can't change the background color. Okay, you know it's white there, the page color. You can't just go and say set background color on like you can on some programs. You actually have to draw a box. So rectangle tool, I'm gonna draw it all the way across, covering the whole thing. I'm gonna give it a color of that really light gray. There we go. And I'm gonna give it a stroke of none. I'm gonna say arrange, send it back please. And it just means that you can see my little belly of my dude there. And if you're like me, I don't like his little pot belly now. I'm gonna click on him, click on that guy once to get the corner and just drag him back down so he's got a nice square belly. <laughs> I'm move my feet in a little bit so you can kind of see that it's got feet at the side. All right, so that's us for this video. We have created a little pop belly content penguin. Uh, what I'd like to do is set you a task now. Okay, so I'd like you to create your own creature. The boundaries are you have to use the tools we've learned in the last three videos. So just things like simple shapes like our triangles, pentagons, stars, rectangles, the corners you can use. I don't want you to use any of the other tools, just these simple tools we've used. The other thing is let's keep our animals. I'm going to give you some boundaries. We're going for ocean going animals. It could be in the sea or like our penguin kind of related to the sea. So pick another animal and and doesn't matter whether you hand draw it and then scan it in or whether you just draw it straight in Illustrator. It's up to you. Now remember this is your first drawing so don't worry if you're like, mm, this isn't good. I would love to see it. Okay, so if you uh, take a screenshot or save this as a JPEG, if you're not sure how to save a JPEG, we'll do it later in the course. Okay, you look for a video called exporting, exporting from Illustrator. You can kind of sneak ahead to that one just so you can get the JPEG out or just do a screenshot. And I'd love for you to upload and tag it to me in Twitter and Instagram. So on Twitter, I am Dan Loves Adobe. Also tag in Tuts Plus, okay? So Envato Tuts Plus, they are Tuts Plus Design on Twitter. And on Instagram, I am Bring Your Own Laptop. Tag me in, I'd love to see what you did. So pause it now, go do that, and then I will see you in the next video where we start looking at something called the Shape Builder tool. All right, I'll see you there. Hello and welcome. This video is all about the Shape Builder tool. We're going to take the drawing we did earlier, this one, and do this to it. What do we do? Okay, we cast some shadows. Can you see? Before, after. We cast some shadows on the penguin, okay, using a real quick and easy tool using the Shape Builder. We also did some stuff with the eye there where it's a kind of a pie shape cut out of the circle. If you have tried Illustrator before and you've messed around with the Pathfinder and thought it was really tough, this is the replacement for it. It is awesome. You'll love it. I spend far too much time hyping this up. Let's just jump in and learn how it works. All right, to get started, let's go to File, let's go to Open, and in your Exercise Files, there's one called Shape Builder Tool. We want the one that says One, Shape Builder Tool One. Not particularly exciting. Um, we've just got some shapes. Now, these are nothing special, just like we did in the last videos. Just I drew some circles and some squares and a star. Now where the shape builder is quite cool, we're gonna just learn the basics here and then we're gonna go back and see what you saw at the beginning there where we kind of add some shadows and stuff to our penguin. So with it all selected, so I grab my black arrow, I've drawn a box all the way around it, or you can hold shift and click one, try and click them all. Either way, once you've got them all selected, we want the shape builder tool. It's this one here, it's a hard one to describe. Two targets and an arrow. Okay, click on this guy here, it's underneath the pin. Now there's a couple of ways to use Shape Builder. Okay, so by default, you can kind of see my cursor there has a little plus. Okay, and what that allows me to do is, these are two separate shapes. What I can do is click in here, hold, drag, 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 and kind of like clicking my mouse, holding and drawing a line in between all three of these. And watch this when I let go. It magics them all together. So now if I go back to my black arrow, click off in the background, this is just one shape that's all been joined up. So I'm gonna undo, I'm gonna stick them all again. I'm going to show you some other things it does. So Shape Builder, okay, by default it's got the little plus, but if I hold down the Option key on my Mac or Alt key on a PC, can you see it changes from a plus to a minus, and it lets me do things like this. I want to delete uh, this chunk here. Just kind of snips it all up where they overlap. If you've ever tried doing that with the Pathfinder tool, maybe you've used Illustrator in the past, man, it was a pain. So clicking and dragging across things joins them up. Holding down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC allows you to click and delete things. Super handy. I'll show you its other really good use. So I'm gonna draw um, a big rectangle across all of these guys, just cause I wanna show you something. So I've drawn a rectangle, I'm gonna grab my black arrow, I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna to jump to my Shape Builder tool. And it does another good thing, rather than just joining up and removing things, you can actually color shapes where they all overlap. Cause remember this rectangle is just a rectangle, okay? I wanna color some intersections. So I'm gonna select them all, 
black arrow, back to my shape builder tool, go to my properties panel, and in here I can pick a fill color. So I can say, back to my swatches maybe, I'm gonna pick uh, blue for no good reason, ah, pink <laughs> for another no good reason. And what we can do is click it to drop it back in, and now look what happens, look, magic. I can just like color bits where they overlap. Now you might not find this amazing, I do. It's just super quick and easy for coloring vector. I can pick different colors. So instead of trying to join them and break them apart and make them complete shapes, I can just click a fill color and just click on one of these separate shapes. Now, if you feel totally underwhelmed by this tool, uh, it's because I've got a really simple exercise here just to get the basics going. So remember, click and hold and drag across to join things. Hold down the Option key or Alt key on a PC to minus things. You can drag across with minus as well to minus big chunks. And remember, with nothing held down, I can just pick a fill and then just click on them to color. So I'm gonna close this down and we're gonna open up another file. So I'm not gonna save it because we didn't do anything very exciting. Some terrible colors there. What I'd like you to do now is go to File, go to Open, and I want you to open up Shape Builder 2. So this exercise here, we're gonna do some more practical uses of that Shape Builder tool, and hopefully you'll see the value then. First thing I wanna do before I get started, black arrow, I'm gonna click on my sky. It's this kind of big gray box in the background here. What I wanna do is something unrelated to the Shape Builder tool, but often useful when you've got like this background color. I wanna put it on its own layer and lock it, so it's not getting in the way of me working on my penguin here. So with it selected, Okay, I'm gonna go to my layers panel. I'm gonna make a brand new layer. That's this little turned up page here, create new layer. Up the top, all the way up here. It's giving me this thing called layer three. I'm gonna double click the word layer three. I'm gonna call this background. Just to give everything a name, layer one, okay, is where all my drawing is. I'm gonna double click layer one and this is gonna be my drawing. So background has nothing on it at the moment. It's a layer with nothing on it. What I'd like to do is put the sky on it and then lock it. So to do that, Black arrow, make sure the sky is selected. You can see this little blue dot here. Okay, that means that's that's indicating that it's on this layer here. The sky is actually on the drawing layer. To move it to the background layer, click and hold this little blue spot until he goes to this layer. Okay, that just says I've dragged him from drawing to the background layer. The trouble with the background layer, it is above everything else. You can kind of see it up here. You see background first, then drawing underneath, and remember that template we had right underneath it all. To change that, grab background, click, hold, and drag the word. Just, you can see those little lines appear everywhere. It's kind of a bit weird, like, so click and hold, drag the word background until it appears just underneath drawing there. You might have to practice that a couple of times. If it goes wrong, go to edit, undo, and see if you can get it into the right position. So how do I know this is on the background layer? See the eyeball? Turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So uh, I know that's the background layer, it's underneath. I'm gonna click this little lock icon like I did for the background. All it means now is if I try and move it, I can't. All right, next thing I wanna do is just make sure on my drawing layer, that's the one I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna go back to my properties panel. All right, so what I'd like to do is I'm gonna change this eye. Okay, he's gonna go from content penguin, I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard. I'm gonna give him a different kind of eye like you saw at the beginning there. I'm gonna grab the ellipse tool. I'm gonna to draw out a nice big ellipse, holding down shift to get it to be perfect. I'm gonna give it a fill color. I'm gonna give it no stroke. What I wanna do is a second circle. So it's really common in cartoons to kind of have that sliced out eye. Okay, so I'm drawing another ellipse, holding down shift. It doesn't matter which color it is, okay, because we're gonna actually delete it, but I've just made it blue so it's easier for you to see. I've moved back to my selection tool. I'm gonna grab the center of it and just kind of overlap it there so it's kind of half off. I wanna slice that out of the eyeball. Make it look like a kind of a reflection. So I'm gonna select both of them, go to my shape builder tool, and what was the key I held down to delete things? Do you remember? That's right, it's the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. And I can say, you go, you go. And the cool thing about that now, see how easy that was? It's like a cookie cutter. Grab my black arrow, I can drag them, and you can see it's actually a hole cut out of it. So I'm gonna hold shift, grab the edge, and get it to a penguiny size, eyeball size. <laughs> you can decide on how big you want this eye. All right, up to you. Where is it gonna be? Yeah, <laughs> all right, it's enough. All right, so that's minusing. We kind of minus that circle from that circle. What I wanna do is join something. So I'm gonna click with my black arrow, the white belly. I'm just gonna drag it up here. Okay, so it kind of overlaps. I'm gonna kind of get it so it matches up with the nose-ish. Cause that's the kind of look that I want. I want it to be all kind of one. So I'm gonna click this, hold shift, and click this in the center. 
So they're the two separate units, but using my handy dandy shape builder tool, I can drag across holding nothing down, just drag across them, kind of draw a line through all three, and hey presto, it's one unit. Cool, huh? And remember the other use for coloring parts? We're gonna add some kind of like fake shadows. So let's grab the line segment tool, and I'm gonna draw like a line, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm gonna draw a line segment that kind of goes from there down to there. You can draw all the way through. Let's do it all the way through just so you can see what to do with the leftover bits. I'm gonna do you. So, drawn a line through it. I'm gonna grab my black arrow and I need to click both the nose and this line. Your line might have a big thick stroke on it. That's fine, it doesn't matter. All we need to do is have that selected, hold shift and click the nose. So you've got both of them selected back to my handy dandy shape builder tool. And remember for coloring, we need to have the shape builder selected first, then go to fill. Okay, then pick a color. I'm just gonna pick a kind of a lighter gray and I'm just gonna click on this, maybe a slightly darker version. It's meant to be light at its peak anyway. So I, it's worked, I colored it, but there's this overlapping hang bit. Now remember what key to hold down to remove things. It's Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, and I can just click on it. Cool, huh? Love that stuff. All right, next thing I wanna do is, same with this, and it's just repeat. So I'm gonna grab my line tool. I'm gonna to draw like a little highlight that kind of goes through here. Shift click them both. Now what you would have noticed there, or might not have noticed, is that I started using a shortcut. And I'm gonna show you just because shortcuts are great. So I was on my line segment tool. I drew it through here. Then I wanted to go back to my move tool. And the move tool, if I hover above it, can you see it has a little V in brackets? That just means that if I click my V key on my keyboard, so it's not on there at the moment, watch this V key, jumps. Okay, if I wanna to go to my shape builder tool, it's a weird one, it's shift M. I use it all the time because I use this tool all the time. Okay, shift M. So if you're using the pencil tool all the time, okay, you can see N is. So N, I don't use it, uh, the pencil tool very often, so I, I don't even know what that shortcut is, but I know V is the move key. I know shift M is the quick selection tool is the shape builder tool. I know P is the pen tool, T is the type tool, just the stuff you use very often, just hover above it and it will give you the shortcut. Some of them don't have some because they just don't get used very much. All right, so V key, uh, I've got them both selected. Shift M to my shape builder tool. I'm gonna pick a fill color, my friend, of that dark gray, click it once, hold down my Alt key or Option key on a Mac. Cool, huh? All right, one more cast shadow and then we'll do one more special trick that the shape builder can do. So don't leave just yet. So first of all, I wanna join these two fellas together. Okay, so I'm gonna hold shift, click both of them, go to my shape builder tool, draw a line through them. So they're all one unit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna go back to my black arrow. I'm gonna copy it using edit copy, then edit paste. So I've got this little speech bubble, <laughs> that's what his body's built out of. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda offset it a little bit. Now, because my smart guides are on, it's very clever and tries to kind of line everything up, which is exactly what I want. Actually, what I might do is do something like that, where it's kind of just down a little bit. So now what I wanna do is I'm going to select both of them. So shift, click both of them. If you're not sure if you've got both of them, just kind of move them and then undo it to go back. And I use this for that kind of vector car shadows all the time. We're gonna use the same trick. Pick a fill color, I'm gonna use that lighter gray. That doesn't work unless you're on the shape builder tool. I was on my selection tool there. So when I changed my fill, it just changed everything. Make sure you're on your shape builder first. Pick your fill color. And then over here, just click on that once. Okay, go your black arrow. I've got all this junk left over. Okay, this thing here, I don't need them anymore. Delete. I used them just to kind of get that. Ooh, it's a bit, a bit bright. Is that better? You get what I mean, right? So I used it to cast the shadow. There's a weird thing down the bottom here. I'm not sure where he came from. I'm gonna hit delete, he's gone. So I promised you one other little trick you can do with the shape builder tool, is that remember when the this tail was separate from the back? Okay, now that they've joined with the shape builder tool, it allows you to do cool things like this. Grab your white arrow. We've been using the black arrow quite a bit. Okay, the black arrow is perfect for moving big lumps around, the whole thing, everything needs to go. If I use the white arrow, the white arrow is for moving little parts within that lump. Okay, so let's say it is uh, this corner here. If I use the black arrow to move this corner, it moves everything. Okay, but if I grab the white arrow, click on the corner once, then try and drag it, I get kind of little bits of individual control. 
And we'll look at that a little bit more when we use the pen tool. But for the moment, the cool thing about it is it says, I'm gonna click on here and you get this corner radius. Can you see it? A little dot on the inside of the angle. I can click and drag it up and I get these kind of like nice curves. Do the same thing for the gray one, click and drag him up. I can get these nice kind of angles going on. I'm gonna do the same for this dot here. Remember, I click it with the white arrow, it's called the direct selection tool. Okay, white arrow, grab, you might have to zoom in a bit. If you find it a little hard to work on, grab that and just tuck him in. Cool, huh? So you've got any points that you're like, oh, I like them, but I just want them to be curved. Ah, oh, curve tool. Ah, they are cool. Corner options, and they are awesome. All right, so that's our penguin with some car shadows and some holes cut in things. It's called the shape builder tool. I should finish it there, but I'm not. I'm going to grab the line tool and I'm going to cast a shadow. I don't know, in the water from the land. Okay, holding shift, grab them both. Pick a fill color. Remember, this is not going to work. <laughs> okay, you've got to have, I'm going to undo. You've got to have the shape builder tool first. I'll leave it in there because you'll, you'll do the same thing. I do it all the time. I should know what I'm doing. I'm going to pick a color from my swatches and now I'm going to click it in there. Click off in the background, black arrow. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's cool, it all kind of suits except for this thing where we drew. I want to delete them so bad, but we'll come back later on and I will show you how to give them a bit more flavor using something called brushes. But for the moment, we're gonna move on to the next video where we create a kind of custom logo. What I really want to do is show you how the shape builder tool works when we're not just drawing penguins, but when we're working say with icons or logos. And we'll do that in the next video. Hi there, in this tutorial, we're going to turn this pile of lines into this M that looks like it's kind of wrapping around on itself. We're gonna use our Shape Builder tool again, but we're gonna learn other tricks and tips for it so you can continue your mastery of Illustrator. Let's jump in and get started. All right, to get started with this one, it's gonna to go to File and we're gonna to go to a brand new document. So File New, mine's defaulted to my recent items. If yours hasn't, go to Print, go to US Letter or A4. I'm gonna pick Landscape just cause. And down here under advanced options, I'm going to switch it up to RGB. Okay, let's click create. Let's save it. So file, save. I was using my shortcut there. File, save is command S on a Mac, control S on a PC. And on my desktop, I've got my class files. Oh man, how efficient are we? This is gonna be my M logo. And often when I'm working on things, anything Illustrator, I'll put a V1 at the end and a V2 and a V3 when I'm kind of doing updates. Never call it, just logo, because then you have to come up with something else for your number two. And it might be two, or you might put in, never put in final. Final's like the kiss of death, because then you have to come up with final two, and final revisited, <laughs> clever name. So I find the V1, V2, V3 works just fine. Some people like to put the date at the end, up to you. My logo V1, sounds good to me. Click save, never have to change this, just click okay. And to center my document, command zero on my keyboard. Okay, just to get it right in the middle. If you're on a PC, it's control zero. All right, so I'm gonna draw my logo using straight lines, okay? And we're gonna use the Shape Builder to kind of delete the bits we don't. It's a good project to see how useful the Shape Builder tool is, creating some just more stranger shapes. So we're gonna use the Line Segment tool. I'm gonna to draw all out of lines, and I want a straight line up and down. If I click and drag though, remember it goes any which way I drag it, but what key could I hold down on my keyboard to get it to go straight? You guessed it, Shift key. Okay, if I hold down the shift key, it locks it into 45 degree increments, and I just want it to be straight up and down. Okay, so I'm gonna drag it down. How long? Mm, everyone's M gonna look a little different. I'm just gonna freehand it. So I want two of these little lines. So with my black arrow, I'm gonna go to edit, copy, edit, paste. So I had it selected, edit, copy, edit, paste, grab the center, drag it along, and it should try and line up. If it doesn't try and line up, just make sure you're under view, your smart guides is turned on, should be a little tick next to it. If it's not, give it a click and you should start working. So let's group these two. Okay, object, let's group them. Because I want to, with them selected, go to copy, go to paste. So I've got a second set. I'm going to draw the kind of like uh, the inner part of the M, okay, at an angle. And remember, just using my black arrow, some vaguely outside of the corner, we get the little bent arrow. Click and drag it until you feel like you've got the angle right. And there is no right, I'm just kind of drawing something. Also make sure that they overlap quite a bit. Why? Because uh, we're gonna kind of get them overlap and use our trick that we used when we did the shadows to kind of fill in things and snip off the lines we don't need. So if they're not quite long enough, you can just drag the ends like this to make them a bit longer. 
What we'll also do is we'll group these two together because what we want to do now is like, instead of trying to get the right angle on the other side is we're just going to reflect this one across. So what we're going to do is select them both. Let's group them just to make it easier on ourselves and then go up to object and there's one in here called, so object transform, there's one in here called reflect. Now weirdly your tra your preview is not going to be on. <laughs> okay, because it was weird. Horizontal, vertical, picking an angle, it doesn't matter. It's not going to show up over here. So what you need to do is turn on preview so that if you're like me and you're like uh, vertical, horizontal, there's even a little handy icon there. Thank you. Okay, if I click OK now, the trouble with it is that it's, it's kind of deleted my original and reflected it across. That's what this little copy button here means. It means that I can make a copy of it and flip it, leaving the original there. Let's just click the button down and see what it does. So there you go. You've got the original, there he is there, and the new one. If you just click OK, you only have this fella left. So what I'd like to do is kind of line them up roughly uh, so they look like an M. Don't worry too much about it. Okay, what kind of M you have. I'm trying to visualize the M in those sticks. What I want to do though is make sure that they're uh, aligned because at the moment I think this one hangs down a lower than this one. So I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to say you let's arrange. It doesn't really matter which one, but it needs to be vertically. There you go. So at least all the way down the bottom there together. Okay, next thing I want to do is zoom in a little bit. I'm going to use lines to kind of cap these ends off. So I'm going to use my line tool, no fill, black stroke. I'm going to use one point. And what I'm going to do is Watch this, if I hover above this okay, line, you can see this is where it says path. Path is the name that Illustrator, it's the nerdy name for a line. Okay, so Illustrator will call it paths. The cool thing about it is, see this where it gets up to here where these two lines join? It says intersect. It just means, do you want to draw something that intersects these two lines? And be like, mm, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Illustrator. I want to click, hold, and drag it. And what you want to notice is that, what's the handy shortcut I can make it to go straight? That's right, shift. And I find with using this tool, it's always better to go past where you need it. It's easy to trim off, but sometimes it can be a little bit, if you don't quite get it banged in there perfectly, I find just going past where you need it to be is a lot better. Same thing over here, clicked and dragged all the way through. And what I might do for this one here is click hold and just drag through then I need it. Gives me a better result. Same with these bottom ones, I'm gonna click hold and drag across all of these all the way through. And now we're going to use our super fancy shape builder tool to trim off all the stuff we don't need. So black arrow, draw a box around it all, make sure you've got it all selected. We're going to grab our shape builder tool and we're going to start deleting things. To delete things, remember what key do you hold down? That's right, option key on a Mac, or key on a PC. And click and drag through all of this stuff. Sometimes you need to do it twice, just because, okay, drag through it all. Clicking and dragging through. You can just click them once, click them once, or click them again. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta click them a few times. There's some stuff in here I want to drag past. Get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. Drag through all of that, through all of that. There we go. We've kind of trimmed it up to something that looks a little bit nicer, at least more like an M. Now I want to kind of make it so that this bit goes all the way and that joins it across. So remember, you don't have to hold anything down to join them up. So I'm going to click and drag across all three of these to make it one unit. I'm going to drag these two to kind of get this like folded origami M type thing. Probably the most overused uh, <laughs> branding thing in the world. Folded M shaped paper stuff. That's all right. I'm sure if you Google it, you'll find a hundred logos that look like this. But what I hope that you got out of that is showing you how you can kind of create something out of nothing just using simple lines. It doesn't have to be complete shapes or rounded corners. You can just draw a pile of sticks so you could hand draw it with your pencil tool, which we'll do in an upcoming video. And then tidy it up with the shape builder tool. So you can move on now. All I'm going to do is I'm going to color it. Okay. And what you'll notice that, can you see this is actually separate parts now? It's not actually a full unit. So I'm going to select it all and color it using my shape builder tool. I go on about the shape builder tool being my favorite. It's because I, I've taught Illustrator for years and years, maybe I don't even know, 15 years. And up until shape builder tool got made, man, it was hard teaching people Illustrator, but uh, it's easier now anyway. So I've got it all selected with my black arrow. I've sh shifted to my shape builder tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a fill color. I'm going to say I want, I'm going to just work with black and white. We'll deal with color a little bit nicer later on in the course. So hang out for that. I'm going to pick a darkish color to do that one. And maybe end that one. Uh, 
we'll work it out. <laughs> Winging this. We'll use a slightly lighter gray for this one. And even lighter gray for this one. Even lighter. Come on, Dan. And this last one here will be, I don't know, darker but lighter. <laughs> I want to use color, but we're saving, we're segmenting these out so we're not overwhelming everyone. Oh, <laughs> glorious. Um, one thing I might do is, can you see these little guys point out in the corners here? I'm going to get rid of my strokes completely. And we'll cover it a bit more when we do lines, but I'm just going to delete them. So strokes are going to be none. So I've just got kind of a full color. Whenever you're presenting a logo, I always find, I don't know why, it might just be me. I'm going to draw a giant rectangle in the background because what I like to present on is a darker kind of gray. Logos are cool. You never get to use them on this dark gray, but they always look nice presented against a nice solid gray. So with my black arrow, I've got it selected. I'm going to say a range sent back and I pick the same gray as that. <laughs> See, my friend need a different gray, darker. Oh yeah. Look at that. How good is that M? All right, that is going to be us. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. I too want you to enjoy the, <laughs> the joys of drawing lines. You've probably done the M with me. I would like you to pick another letter. Try not to pick anything that has a roundy part because we just draw it with lines. So pick a letter that can be drawn with straight lines. And I'd love to see what you do. Try your first name or your last name, whatever the first initial is or the last initial is. Mine's Dan Scott, so it's terrible. D's and S's aren't good for this tutorial. So my middle name is W for Walter, so... I could just turn this upside down, I guess, but I want you to practice, draw a different letter, an E or an F or an L, something that has straight lines, and I'd love to see what you did. Remember on Twitter, we are Dan Loves Adobe, and make sure you tag Envato Tuts Plus as well. It's Tuts Plus Design. Those are both for Twitter. If you're more of an Instagram person, tag me in it. I am Bring Your Own Laptop. All right, let's get on to the next video where we, instead of using simple shapes to make illustrations, we're going to use something called the Curvature Tool to draw our own custom stuff. There'll be curves involved. All right, let's jump into it now. Hello, Illustrator learners. In this video, we are going to draw all of these icons using the curvature tool. It's like the pen tool, just a bit easier. Let's get started. All right, to get started, let's make a new blank document. So file new. Uh, it's already loaded with my last thing I've done. Okay, so I've set it to inches and it's just remembered uh, landscape US letter. Okay, I'm gonna click create. I'm going to bring in something we're going to trace and a little tip for you if you are bringing in things to be traced if I leave it here can you see it's kind of offset a little bit to the right of my screen it's going to put my trace document overlapping this edge here but if I quickly go to view and go to fit upward to window okay so it's in the center now when I bring it in it's going to be in the middle it's a weird little quirk all right so go up to file and go to place in your exercise files there's one called redrawicons.png and just make sure it's a template because it's going to put it on its own layer fade it out so we can trace over the top click place awesome okay so there's my redraw layer and we're going to use this thing here called the curvature tool that looks very close to the pen tool if the word pen tool uh, is not new to you you'll probably know the pen tool which we're going to cover in the next video is man it's hard to learn not impossible, just harder than the Curvature tool. It's a new tool, the Curvature tool. I love that Adobe Illustrator invented this tool. It's super quick, super easy. I love it. It's like the simplified version of the pen tool. Okay, so give it a click. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this, like it's meant to be a palette, like an artist's palette paint thing. Zoom in again. And we're going to start with a circle in the center here. So we could just use the ellipse tool, I know, but we're learning the Curvature tool. And for a circle, just so you know, there are four points that make up a circle. And how you use the curvature tool to do it is you click once at the top, or once on the side, or once on the bottom. And you can see there, I'm going to start again. Click once, nothing happens. Click again, and you're like, this is not very curvature tool-like. Okay, and it's not until you kind of move the mouse out. I'm not doing anything. It just kind of starts guessing about what you want to do, which is super cool. Click once at the bottom, click once there, click once more to close it all up. And it's a pretty good circle. I haven't like done it perfectly, but it's... It's pretty clever. What I'll do as well is I'm gonna turn my fill to none and my stroke to black, one point. You do that as well, well, pick anything. <laughs> Just turn the fill off in the middle so we can see through. So drawing circles, easy enough. 
what we're going to do now is this outside where there's kind of curves going each way. So we do you know how to click. We kind of know from the circle here that there kind of should be a point out here, maybe one at the bottom, but all the rest of them are like, where do I put this curvature tool? And the answer is just where the apex is out, where the middle of a curve is. So you can kind of see there's a curve here and there's another curve going the other way. I'd say that's the middle of this one and kind of there is the middle of this one going that way. So let's start there in this dip. So I'm going to click once. Remember, nothing really happens. I'm gonna click the second one at the top here because like that feels like the middle. This feels like the middle of this one. We can move them afterwards, don't worry. And again, we just get this weird straight line and it's not till we kind of move over here do we decide. Now, don't worry about the curve, the blue line coming out. Don't try and line it up. People try and line it up here. Just know that, um, remember our circle before kind of had one over here and there was one down the bottom. And you can see this curve looks not very good, right? But when I come down to the second one, there's a little bit of faith involved, okay? And you learn how the curvature tool works a little bit, kind of from experience. It's kind of a little bit hard to explain sometimes. But if you put the curves kind of halfway around this curve, a little bit down here, maybe another one there, you can delete and add them later on. Now this curve here, where is the center of it? It's kind of about there. And then back to the beginning here. And all I do is click once and it completes it all up. Cool, huh? And the nice thing about it is they're really fluid lines. Okay, a couple of things that you might run into trouble with is you might find it a little bit tough using the smart guides. I've turned mine off. I cheated at the beginning. Okay, I should have said at the beginning, but go to view and I've turned smart guides off by clicking the little tick and it just turns off. And make sure you turn it on later on because it's quite helpful. I'll try and remind you. But sometimes, like I said at the beginning, the, the smart guides can just be more hassle than they're worth. All right, what else can we do with this curvature tool? Say you kind of like it and you're like, oh, it's almost there, this one's a little bit wrong. So I'm still using my curvature tool. I can just click hold and drag them around, okay? Because I told you like one needs to be there and one needs to be there, but when you're doing it on your own, you're gonna be like, oh, I don't know where these go and you're just gonna click all over the place. So what you can do, just fix them up, just throw them in, don't worry, get them in roughly where they need to go. Even if it looks bad, okay, you can grab these guys, click on them. It kind of goes blue and I can click and drag them to say I want you to be a bit further up there and maybe you around here a bit more and maybe you look better down here. You can see I'm kind of trying to fix it by moving these guys around. Cool, what else can you do? Maybe you've not got enough. Okay, say you didn't put one over here. Okay, and it's just there's, you just can't do it. You can move this one around and you can move this one down. There's just not enough control, right? So I need another one to help me out. So to add another one, all you do is use the same tool and just, you can kind of see the icon changes from this. See the little plus appears, so asterisk plus. Okay, the little plus button just says I'm gonna add a point and then it'll, it'll give you a little bit more control. And the kind of tip, I guess, the pro tip is it will be most smooth with the least amount of these little dots. They're called anchor points, okay? The fewer of these you can have, the nicer the curve will be. So you might get tempted just to put in loads of these because then you get to do all this like really fine adjustment. Okay, and it doesn't matter how good you are. I'm pretty good, okay? But if I have lots of anchor points, okay, it can look kinda good, but then if I click off and I'll turn off my trace layer, can you see it's just a little bit wobbly down the bottom? It's not bad, okay, but it's just a, it's not super smooth like up here. Oh, look how good that is, and look how little bit wobbly that is. Okay, to delete points, use the same tool, so curvature tool, give them a click, and all you do is hit delete on your keyboard. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. <laughs> All right, now there will be a point where this curvature tool is good, but it's hiding some of the like nitty gritty detail, okay? So if there is times where you just need a little bit more control, what you can do is you can ditch the curvature tool once you've got it all in there and start using this guy here. Remember the black selection tool? Okay, the black arrow, that's for moving this thing around kind of the whole thing physically. The white arrow, remember, is moving little parts within this object around. Okay, so I can use my white arrow, click on any of these anchor points and say it's this one here that I want to fix. I can physically move them like I did in the curvature tool. But also I can do, I'm gonna zoom in a bit, is I've got these two little guys here. They're always there, the curvature tool hides them just to make the tool, I guess, a little easier for people that are new, but these guys can be quite handy. So this is considered what is an anchor point. Okay, so this is the line has to run through him. Doesn't matter, has to go through it. These guys influence how that line kind of gets to it. So they're kind of like influencing the line or gravity. They're kind of trying to pull it towards them. They're like little moons. So watch this, if I grab it and drag it, can you see it's influencing the line? It's not like 100% moving it to follow it, but it's kind of dragging it out, okay? And you can do a couple of things. Is you can drag it in nice and tight, so both sides. You can see 
the with the handles quite close to the anchor point. It's quite an acute curve. Okay, acute. I'm not sure if that's the right word, <laughs> but kind of pointy curve. Okay, and the further they are out, if I drag them right out, can you see they they make it quite flat through that anchor point. So there's a bit of playing around and getting used to these guys. Click, hold, and drag, and don't be afraid to do this. Wiggle, 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 and just kind of work out what it does. And kind of I'm looking for this side a little bit, and then this guy over here. And what you'll find with them, it's kind of a seesaw, okay, where I fix this side, I get this looking nice, and I've wrecked that side. You're like, oh, no. Uh, fix that side, oh, and I've wrecked that side. And what you'll find is little by little, you'll kind of work them in until they both kind of sit happily. And you can also see this guy is influencing the line as it comes through this anchor point. So we might play around with him as well. So this white arrow gives us really fine adjustment. It's a bit uh, finicky, but sometimes you need finickiness to, to get it all nice and pretty. All right, so that's doing a big curve. Let's do corners. Okay, so the curvature tool. Okay, if I just click once, click once, you end up with a kind of a weird looking, it's meant to be a funnel. Okay, this funnel here obviously is not working good with the curvature tool. So you can use the curvature tool to do straight lines. So I'm gonna just hit delete, just delete everything there. So to do a corner, so clicking once gives you a curve, right? So what you do is you double click to get a corner. So I know this is a corner, double click. That's a corner, double click, double click, double click. You get the idea, right? So doing straight lines is easy, you just gotta to remember to double click. Now, when you get back to the beginning, this is gonna be weird, watch, double click. Whoa, what happened? It's a quick, okay, if I undo, undo again. So what's happening is when I get back to the beginning, it already knows it's a corner, because we told it at the beginning. We double click and said, you're a corner. So when I get back to here, I don't actually need to do anything. Okay, I just click once. And it kind of just accepts whatever I originally put it there. If I double click it, what it's saying is, is I'm completing it and then trying to convert it to a curve. Okay, so it's a bit weird. All you need to know is when you get round to the beginning, there's my curvature tool, you want to join it back up, you don't have to do anything, just click once. Curve, corner, just kind of finish it up by clicking it once. If you do end up doing this, da, <laughs> okay? All you need to do is double click it again and it converts it from curve to corner, curve to corner, okay? So you liked all this, but you want these to be curves, double click, double click. And we have <laughs> kind of a weird funnel. So let's do this example now. This is a bit of both curves and corners. So what you've got to do is, what I find the easiest for new students is, before you click, is to ask yourself, is this a corner or a curve? Okay, this is a corner, clearly. Okay, some sort of sharp corner. So, and remember, corners are double clicks. Okay, sharp edges. Remember, clicking once gives you lovely curves, and double clicking gives you a corner. So that's what we're gonna do. This one here, double click. Now this big arc along here, where is about halfway? I feel like that's about halfway. Click once for a curve. This is a corner or a curve. It's a curve, so just click once. Over here, corner or curve, it's a curve. It's a curve. Back to here, remember, it doesn't matter what you decide. You've already called this a corner, so I just click it once. If you accidentally get it like this, what do we do? Double click it again, and it goes back to being a corner. Again, if we haven't got it quite right, we can just drag these around. We can add new points by just clicking anywhere, and we can delete them just by hitting the delete key on our keyboard. Same again here. I could copy, paste it, reflect it, but that's not what we're doing. We're learning the curvature tool. So this curve here, I'm gonna click once because it's a curve, right? Is this a curve? Yeah, it's a curve. Yeah, it's a curve. I'm guessing because I'm like, where do these curves go? I can adjust it later on, don't worry. This one here, is it a corner or a curve? Ah, oh, it's a corner. So what was it? Double click, down here, curve. Back to the beginning, just click it once. It's a bit ugly, but we can fix it. Drag it around drag it around, add remove, and if I want to kind of finesse it a bit more, remember the white arrow, click on this fella, move him around, start adjusting the handles, okay, and get a bit more finer control. All right, let's look at this fella here. Pretty easy, except we're gonna, I, wanna, I wanted to have something like this because I wanted to show you a straight line that goes into a curve. That's the kind of last thing we need to acknowledge or work out how to do. So let's do the circle at the beginning. So curvature tool, and just so you know, or well, just so you remember, it's one in every kind of corner, north, south, east, west. Even though I got that pretty off, it's still a pretty good circle. Now, I wanna draw this bottom part, and this is gonna lead me to one issue you're gonna run into, is I wanna start this line here, so I'm gonna click there, and then I'm gonna double click there, and it didn't connect up, why? I'm gonna undo and undo. It's cause when I, in my head, I'm like, yeah, I wanna start a line there and draw it down, but what the computer's seeing is, can you see the little plus button? 
add an anchor point there. And then down here it says, well, that's, you know, nowhere near that line. So you probably want to start another line and you kind of go off. So it's, you need to kind of acknowledge or at least tell Illustrator that we don't want to work with this. And the easiest way is with it selected, it's currently selected. If it's not, click it with the black arrow and just go up to object and lock it. Can you see this one that says object lock selection? And it just temporarily locks it. Okay, I can't drag it or move it. It's the same as we did earlier on Mover, our layers panel. We put things on its own layer and then locked it. It's just like a smaller version of that. Because in this case, I don't really want its own special layer for a circle. I just want to temporarily do it. And when you want to unlock it, you go to object and there's one that says unlock all. Okay, and they, everything that's locked in the page comes back. So I'm going to lock it again. Go to my curvature tool. And this is a straight line, so double click. Double click. And this is the bit I wanted to show you. So if I click once for a curve here and I double click for a corner, I end up with that. <laughs> it's not what I want. So kind of cool. But so what I want to do is there's a straight line here and it kind of finishes about there. Okay, then the curve starts. So I want this to be straight. Okay, so we double click. Then it's a curve. Click once. Double click for a straight line. Double click for a straight line. And that's how you get those kind of, there's a long part with a curve. It needs to have a little bit of a few extra anchor points that maybe you thought. Okay, so these two lines are double clicks. So there's a straight line and then there's this guy in the middle for a curve. Double click, double click, click once, double click, click once. And oh, I'll have to, <laughs> don't click once, it's a corner. Okay, and up here I'm going to double click because I want it to be a straight line. It wasn't a straight line. How do I go back and fix it? So with the same tool, just double click them. Why did I overlap them? Okay, it's because that I want to color them in or delete this chunk and I want it to butt up really closely to this line. And we're going to use the Shape Builder tool, kind of doubling down on our tools that we've already learned. Okay, now we're at a point where this thing won't let go. I'm like, I'm finished. Let go. Ah. Okay, and there's two things you can do. You hit Escape on your keyboard. So look down, it's the top left of your keyboard. Okay, Escape is the, just let go. Like, get off there. Okay, now we can go start working on this thing. Or what you could do is you could just say, I'm going to go back to there, join it up, and then it lets go because it's completed the whole path. And it doesn't really matter because we're going to delete all of that stuff with the Shape Builder tool anyway. So next thing we're going to do, it's already selected, Object, uh, Lock, Selection, and we're going to work on this part. So double click for a straight line. Well, actually, it's kind of, yeah, double click for a corner up here. I'm going to click once for a curve, double click, Double click to get the straight lines, little curve, click once, double click, and then I'm going to kind of overlap this thing. Now this is probably not the best example because you're like, man, it's so symmetrical. Why isn't he using like the rounded corners thing? And I probably would. But again, we're practicing the curvature tool so you can do lots of things with it. So I'm just going to delete it and this is what I would be doing. I'd grab the rectangle tool, just drag it out, and then I'd grab my black arrow, actually the white arrow, remember, click this guy. Hold shift, grab the second guy and just drag him in. <laughs> but that's cheating. It's the right way, but it's cheating. Now what I want to do is I want to select it all and use the shape of the tool to delete the chunks I don't need, like this bit and that bit that overlaps. But I can't select this. Why not? You remember. Okay, we need to go to unlock all. Okay, so that's why that lock is quite cool. It's temporary. You don't have to go and bother making layers. It's just quick and easy. We've unlocked them. We've selected them all with our black arrow. Now we're going to go to our Shape Builder tool, my favorite tool, and we're going to delete stuff. So what do we do? We hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. I say, get rid of that line. Let's get rid of that line. And life is good, my friends. All right, so what do we do now? There's these two guys at the bottom here, and this is your homework. Okay, there are a range of straights and corners. Okay, and um, there's going to be bits that you'll need to lock and join up. The only thing you're not allowed to do is you're not allowed to use shapes. You're not allowed to use ellipses and rectangles just because we're practicing the tool. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to draw these and color them. I'd like you to color all of these people. Okay, and these guys are going to be super easy to color. There's going to be probably some arranging to do to practice. This one here is going to need your special trick where we fill because these are actually separate shapes. Watch. Can you see there's no joiner here? So what we need to do is select them all and use the Shape Builder tool that we used in a previous tutorial to color them. Okay, so fill, color, just in case you forgot. Cool, so draw these guys, color them in, and I'd love to see them. Remember on Twitter we are 
Dan loves Adobe, and also make sure you tag Tuts Plus Design. And on Instagram, I am Bring Your Own Laptop. Love to see your drawing or like mark your homework. Make sure you've colored them as well. And if it goes horribly wrong, you can mention that in your post as well, and I'll jump in and give you a hand. Right, my friends, that is the curvature tool. In the next video, we're going to look at his best friend, the pen tool. I'll see you there after your homework. Welcome back, everyone. This video is all about the pen tool. We're going to draw these icons. You might be thinking, hey, these are the same icons from the curvature tool. They are. We're going to compare the curvature tool with the pen tool, because really, as an Illustrator user, you're probably going to need both. So let's jump in now and figure out the pros and cons for the pen tool. All right, to get started, we're going to redraw the same things just to kind of see the clearly the differences between the curvature tool and the pen tool. Um, save some time if you've got a file open in your exercise files is one called pen tool.ai. I've just kind of imported that graphic already for us, ready to go. Okay, the reason we have the curvature tool and the pen tool is the pen tool is kind of like a, a really kind of staple for pretty much all graphic design programs and 3D and drawing, lots of things use the pen tool. So once you've learned it in Illustrator, you can use it in the same tool and works the same way in Photoshop and in InDesign, SketchUp, 3D Studio Max, After Effects, lots of different programs use the pen tool. The curvature tool is new and just a bit easier, but really you need to know both the slightly harder version or more controlled version of the pen tool and the curvature tool, which is just a bit easier. So we're gonna use the pen tool. First thing to note is if you've got caps lock on your keyboard, okay, so look down your keyboard, you know, you can turn caps lock to make your um, type uppercase and lowercase. By clicking it on and off, it changes it from this pen tool to the crosshairs. I only show you that because you might have it on and you may be like, wow, freaking out. Why does mine not look like Dan's? So just tap it on and off. You can decide it doesn't change it at all. Just it's just a different way of working. We're going to stay with a little fountain pen looking thing. Okay, and we'll start with the funnel here because it's kind of the opposite of the curvature tool. The pen tool draws by default straight lines. So if I clicked once, remember with the curvature tool, it gave us a curve. If I click once with the pen tool, once, once, it just gives us corners. So corners are awesome with the pen tool. Just keep clicking and come back to the beginning, click once. Let's remove the fill. So I have a fill of none and a stroke of black. And let's get back to this guy. So how do we do curves then? Okay, so it's slightly different. Let's pick a curve. Let's pick, uh, say, this curve here. Yep. And you click, hold your mouse down and drag. And then you get this random thing. We, we've seen it before, right? We saw it with the curvature tool. It gives us the fine adjustment. And I guess that's why the pen tool is the way it is. It gives us fine adjustment straight out of the bat, where the curvature tool does a bit of thinking for us. So what we do is click it. And where do we drag it? You drag it whichever way you want the line to keep drawing. So I'm going to keep drawing down this way. So I'm going to drag it down here. And how far do I draw it? This comes with experience. So it's kind of hard to kind of guess this first one. So we're just going to drag it out this far. Okay, and nothing really happens, right? You're like, hmm. And it's not until you let go and you kind of move the mouse out. And you're like, ah, okay, that's what it's doing. Remember that anchor point? And these are the handles that kind of influence that line. Now, same point before, like kind of halfway through a curve, kind of breaking this into two because I can try and do it with one, but there's just not enough control with just one anchor point. It kind of works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one there, maybe one there and one over here. So clicking, dragging, okay. And then you want to try and see, I can get real fine control by just kind of dragging it around. So give it a wiggle because, you know, sometimes this way, sometimes that way. It's a little hard to, I guess, get your head around when you're first using it. So don't be afraid just to move this in and out, up and down and around to see if we can get the curve. Awesome. Okay, where's my other curve going to be? Remember, we can adjust it afterwards by using the white arrow. So don't get too worried about your first go at it. Click. Okay. And clicking once, like I did there, it's going to give me a corner. So that's not what I want, right? So I'm going to undo. Remember, clicking, holding, and dragging, following the line around. Cool. You're going to get to a point here where you're like, actually, I just want to click once because that curve is good. But we really want a corner, right? Because if I do this and then try and do this, we get this sharp corner. So I get to here, click and drag out. And you can see it's destroying the line. You're like, oh, man, I really wanted it to... It was looking good. Don't worry. We put in these first anchor points and handles only so that we can adjust them afterwards. So I'm going to drag it like this way, drag it up this way, drag it up this way. I'm going to get back to the beginning. What we need to do to finish this thing is um, we don't just click once like we did the curvature tool. We decide, is it a corner? Okay, if we want it to be a corner, we click once. It gives a kind of a sharp end to it. But if you want it to be a curve, you click, hold, and drag it. You can kind of see I dragged it out, and you get this kind of little handle popping out. It's a little bit strange. It takes a little bit of practice. Now, mine looks okay. Okay, yours might look really bad. 
that's totally okay. What we can do is we can look to fix it. So let's grab the direct selection tool. Remember the white arrow allows us to do some fine detail adjustments. This is the biggest, ugliest thing. Now there's this curve here, like it did with the curvature tool. These are these two handles kind of affecting this line. This one's kind of okay. It's this massive guy out here. He's kind of doing battle with this poor little guy. Okay, so we're going to say you be a bit smaller and be less influential on that line. And I'm happy with that. I'm happy enough with this. Here we go. Okay, so you can do this fine kind of seesaw adjustment. You can move them around just like we did with the curvature tool. All right, there we go. Now I'm really messing around with it. It's looking pretty good. So a couple of things with the pen tool. Often it can be easier to turn off view. Smart guides, mine are turned off. And let's look at how to add, remove, and convert those corners. Okay, so let's say this one here is accidentally a corner. With the pen tool, it has its kind of special own tool called the anchor point tool. Okay, this will convert anchor points. Okay, so you click and hold down the pen tool and this guy here. So click it once, we'll turn it into a corner. Click and drag out from the anchor point, we'll turn it into a curve. Click once, you're a corner, click and drag, you're a curve. What people tend to do is to drag this out, they're not sure which way to drag it. And I'll try and do something like this. They're like, oh, how's this? And you can kind of see what I'm doing, right? It's kind of looping back on itself. So if you're like, man, that's doing some weird spaghetti stuff, it's probably on the wrong side. All right, let's move on to doing the circle. Yes, we should probably just use the ellipse tool, but I'm gonna use the pen tool to show you what how it works. So drawing a circle, we know that it kind of needs to be in all four corners. So I'm gonna click and drag out. That's the first one, it's the hard one. You're like, well, it's nothing. You Because if I just start with it clicking once there and then start dragging out, it's gonna work kind of until I get back around to the beginning. Because I said to that to be a corner point, right? And you end up with that. So the very first one on faith, I'm gonna drag it out to kind of create some sort of curve. Okay, I'm gonna click and drag you out. I'm gonna click and drag you out. I'm gonna click and drag you out. Wrong way, that way, spaghetti, good way. And back to the beginning, I'm gonna click and drag out. So my, my circle, terrible, terrible circle. How do you, I guess I wanna show you this because I wanna show you how to get nice symmetrical looking things. So I'll show you a real circle. So a circle, the ellipse tool, if I draw this out, there's nothing different between, well, other than that one's beautiful and that one's ugly, this one has the same sort of construction. Watch this, can I see? I've got my white arrow, clicking on the ellipse, and you can just see, it's got anchor points in all corners, but they're exact. And can you see, this is the big thing. Can you see there's anchor points completely across from each other and they run parallel, they're the same length. You can see my ones, if I click the top one, uh, these are reasonably across from each other, but you can see that one points that way, that one points that way, I'm gonna zoom in. So. To get this to be symmetrical, we need this top one to be nice and flat. It's not gonna be perfect, just so you know, but this is how to get kind of balanced lines or nice looking curves. If you're like, man, I can never get it right. It's probably because you need these ones to be somewhat symmetrical. Better, it's getting better. You see they need to be the same length as well. See this one's short, this one's tall. So you back up a little bit, buddy. You probably need to back up a little bit as well. And you can start to see it's getting better. <laughs> okay, I just want you to, I guess, get the understanding of how these guys all interact together, that there's a kind of a bit of a balance. They need to be the same length, kind of the same angles will give you a nicer looking. It's better, right? Better. All right, let's go and look at doing, we've done the funnel. Let's look at doing our last one together, which is this guy, mixture of both. So pen tool. What am I doing? It's a corner, so I click once. Big curve, click and drag. Around right here somewhere, click and drag. Click and drag, oh man, but don't worry. I need a corner there, but I need to back him up. Okay, but I can do that once I'm finished. Click and drag, back to the beginning, click once. Grab my white arrow, drag him out, you, and just so, I, just so you know, like uh, the first 20 things you're gonna draw are gonna slowly gonna get better and better as you get accustomed to kind of this, how life works with the pen tool. And if you are somebody who like dabbles and does the pen tool like once every six months, you're probably not gonna get like hugely experienced with it. It's when you kinda, I don't know, I've had jobs where I've had to redraw people's faces with lines and it, you just become, a job like that gives you loads of experience with the pen tool and its quirks and you start getting good at it. Like most things, it's all about just kind of getting in and using it for quite a bit. All right, the next thing we'll look at is grab the pen tool and if we wanna add, uh, say we need some more control. So this one here, I'm gonna, you see that icon changes from the asterisk to the little plus, I'll add another one. If you wanna get rid of one 
All you need to do, you don't need to do anything, just hover above it. Can you see this anchor point here? Goes from over here, it's gonna add, see the little plus, but here it's gonna say minus, just click on it. I'm gonna add it back in, grab my white arrow, drag it back over here. And that my friends is the pen tool. All right, is there any other tips I wanna give you? One more, and um, if you click once and you start dragging, you're like, oh, you're like, actually I've messed this up. And you're like, ah, let go, stop doing it. Okay, you can just hit the escape key on a keyboard, just kind of disconnects it. And you can either go edit undo or just hit the delete key twice, once, twice, kind of start again. Now the caps lock changes it from this crosshairs and it doesn't matter, works the same way. Just a, I guess a little bit more precise with the crosshairs. I don't know why, I just got used to using it with the little fountain pen, so I use it by just tapping the caps lock. And one more tip is if you do kind of let, somehow magically let go of this thing, you're like, oh no, I've got a line, I wanna continue it because I've maybe done some beautiful work, I don't wanna have to restart. What you can do is, can you see the icon? It wants to, with a little asterisk, means I'm gonna start a new line. But watch this, when it goes to the little uh, forward slash, that means I'm gonna, hey, connect to where I was. So now, kind of connecting up to where I was before. So starting a line again, just gotta give it a click. And that, my friends, is a terrible flame. You are gonna spend a little bit more time and get it looking great. I want you to then work on this, work on all of these guys. And what I'd love to see is both your curvature tool and your pen tool exercises side by side. Okay, so color them in and I'd like you to, I guess, send me your side by sides so that we can kind of see which one kind of came out the best. And also drop a comment and just say, this. I found the pen tool just so much easier having the control or man, I'm gonna use the curvature tool. So just let me know the pros and cons, what you find good, what you find bad. Remember on Twitter, it's Tuts Plus Design. And also make sure you tag me personally, I'm Dan Loves Adobe. And on Instagram, I am Bring Your Own Laptop. All right, friends, I'll see you after you've done your homework. I'll be checking and we'll get started with the pencil tool. See you in that video next. Welcome back. This video, we are going to be looking at the pencil tool, how to make it a little bit easier to draw with so it makes you look good. Once we've done our drawings, we're gonna add things like this where we kind of have this nice kind of profiled stroke on it. We'll look at doing arrowheads, dotted lines, dashed lines, and this kind of artistic hand-drawn over the top of a real image project. Let's jump in now and get started. All right, to get started, I've just created a blank page, created any size you like. I'm using US letter landscape. I'm gonna bring in an image. So let's go to file, let's go to place. And in your exercise files, we're looking for one called pencil tool 01. Now this image comes from Unsplash. It's a really cool site that you can use for free commercial use images. Okay, so that's Unsplash. Thank you for the use of this image. And we're not gonna use the template in this case because what happens with a template is it fades it out. And I don't want that for this case. I just wanna bring it in and we'll lock it. So let's click place. Now, when you're bringing in an image, if you click once, it's gonna bring it in at full size. I'll do it, you don't, you wait there, watch this. Click once, whoa, it's a big image. I'm gonna zoom out way bigger than my page. So what I'm gonna do is before I place it, I'm gonna zoom back in. I'm gonna show you a different way of placing. So file place. And it's easier just to click, hold and drag. Okay, and you can just like tell it what size that you want it to be. Cool, and we could put it on its own layer and lock it, or what was the trick we used before? Object, lock, selection. All right, so let's get going with the pencil tool. So this one here looks like a pencil underneath the brush tool and you won't see it because it's hiding under the shaper tool. So shaper tool is like the first tool, click and hold it down and grab the pencil tool. I'm gonna zoom in. What I'm gonna do before I start drawing is I'm gonna say I would like no fill. Okay, so red line and the stroke I'm gonna use is white. Now, by default, the pencil tool's a little weird. First thing is, is that I'm gonna draw those wings that you saw at the beginning. So if I draw my like little wings, okay, and I draw my other little wing, and I draw my other little wing. Can you see there, it like deleted the first one to replace the second one? That's just one of the defaults. It means if you draw kind of a line close to the one you drew before, it tries to redraw it. I have never found that useful. Now it's joined them all up, it's a little weird. So to turn that setting off, I'm gonna delete all that, is double click the tool. Double clicking the tool opens up the settings for it. And in this case, I wanna say this one, keep selected. I always turn it off and I never turn it back on. You might find a good use for it, but I don't. Now when I draw stuff, okay, it is not going to keep it selected, which means it's not gonna try and redraw it. 
Now, the other trouble is, is that my drawing <laughs> looks terrible. Okay, so if you're not using, say, a Wacom stylus, even if you are, okay, I'm just using my regular mouse, what you can do just to make yourself look a bit better, same options, double click the pencil tool and see what says fidelity, you can crank up the smoothing. So down really low means it's gonna follow your mouse perfectly. That's not what I want. I want it to kind of not be perfectly smooth, maybe just about there. Make me look better, Illustrator. So I'm gonna draw this and you can see, oh, look how good those lines are. So much nicer. I want a different kind of one. And I want this kind of like wing thing going on. You can see those curves, I'm just clicking and dragging pretty badly. I don't like that one. I can delete them by clicking the black arrow, hit delete on my keyboard, back to my pencil tool. Don't worry about it, Dan. <laughs> don't worry about it, I keep drawing. They look kind of cool. Anyway, kind of a wing. Stop drawing. All right, let's look at strokes in a little bit more detail. I promised earlier on we would. So I've drawn these with the pencil tool. They are considered a stroke. Okay, and the stroke at the moment is a white line and it has these kind of flat ends. Okay, remember what those are called? Yep, the funny word. Let's grab the black arrow. Let's select them all and let's change the stroke. So remember, we can increase the stroke. That's fine. And who remembers where we get in to change the capping at the end to make that kind of a bubble end? Remember, click on the word stroke. There it is there. Okay, and we can pick our rounded caps or the projecting cap, <laughs> okay. The other thing we're gonna look at is the cornering. Can you see here, it's got this nice, I want this angle, well, I like it, but you can change that kind of corner to be rounded as well to match the rest of it. Can you see if you want that kind of roundedness to continue? I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit better. You're watching for this guy, it's the only corner that I've got, okay. But by default, it's a nice sharp corner, rounded, or you can mitre the end or bevel it. Either one you want. Okay, and let's say I don't want this kind of, because it's the same stroke all the way along. What we're gonna look at is this thing called profile. So in stroke here, all of these guys selected, go to profile and there's a bunch of them in here that kind of look nice. Watch this, if I click this first one down, you can see what it's done, click off, cool, huh? Okay, just gives it more of a, like a painterly stroke. Okay, have an experiment with all of these. Okay, there's different kinds of ones in here. Oh, look at that, looks good. You're thinking tribal tattoo, right? That would have been handy when that was super popular. But anyway, still kind of cool, I like it. I might select it and increase it up a little bit to give a bit more of a fuller little wing there. All right, let's zoom out. Next up with this kind of pencil drawing is we'll look at arrowheads. I'm gonna grab my pencil tool again. I'm gonna have some lines that come off the front of this for no reason. I'm trying to, I try to put them all into this class to, I don't know, it's a design element. I want arrows kind of racing forward. Look how good this shoe is. Black arrow, select them all, and in the stroke here, you probably saw it before, there's one called arrow heads. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on my arrows. Okay, click on stroke, because the arrow heads will depend on which end you stick it, depending on which way you drew it. So if I do this end, can you see it's the wrong side? So I'm gonna go back to none at the top, and the second option, I'm gonna pick one of the arrow heads. And luckily there's all sorts of different kinds of arrows, depending on what you consider an arrow, what you want to do as an arrow, there's lots, look at it all. Perfect. Okay, what you might find though is some of these arrows, if I click on this arrow, and say you wanna thicken up the line, the arrowheads get unproportionately bigger. You see the line just come up a couple of steps, but these arrowheads get huge. So nicely in the new version of Illustrator, they've changed, can you see the scale of these two arrowheads? Okay, so I can lower this down. Okay, let's say I want it to be maybe 50% of what it was. I find getting closer to a, I don't know, that feels more like a proper ratio to me. Let's zoom out. So arrowheads, the profile. We've got our pencil tool doing nice smooth stuff. Let's look at dashed lines. So I'm gonna draw another line around the edge here. Look like it's been cut out. Oh, that didn't go well. Also didn't go well. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, so here's my lovely line that I wanna make dashed. So I'm gonna grab my black arrow, give them a select, and I'm gonna say dot. And there it is there, dashed. So dashed is easy. A couple of things you might wanna play around with is the weight and the capping. Okay, but caps are just a really solid end. Okay, more kind of like traditional, traditional, yeah, traditional dotted lines. All the rounded ones, yeah, nice round ends. I'm gonna use the butt cap and I'm gonna look down here. So if I just put in this measurement here, this 12 points, 
it's gonna go a 12 point line with a 12 point gap. 12 point line, it just assumes this is what you mean. What you can do is you can say, I want a 12 point line, but a really skinny gap. So I can say, I wanna make it two points. Okay, and I'm gonna click in here. You can see it's a 12 point line, but with a two point gap. So you can decide how you want it to be. You might decide now I want a five dash with a really big gap of 20. You can create your own kind of dash lines. All right, let's look at the next one. Let's look at dotted lines. Dash lines, super easy. Dotted lines for some reason are super complicated. Well, they're not. You're just gonna have to like bookmark this video and come back to it every time. I only remember it because I have to teach this stuff. So let's grab our pencil tool and let's draw like a flight path. Imagine these shoes are flying around the world doing great Nike stuff. There we go. So I've got this line. It's remembered the last thing I've done. So I'm gonna click on it and go to stroke and say, let's get rid of that dash line. So back to a regular line. So to do a dotted line, you need to turn dash line on. Let's get rid of everything else in here back to kind of default. And the way you do it is really weird. The first dash you put in is zero, which doesn't do anything until you click on round caps. It needs to be zero. Then the gap is however big you want it to be. I'm gonna do 12. And you can kind of see it half works. You can see it's got these like, like the dashes are absolutely zero. But if you make those absolutely zero dashes round caps, they make dots. Weird, huh? I'm gonna make the gap a bit smaller so it makes it a bit easier to see. I'm gonna increase the weights. So that, my friends, is a really weird way to do dots. So just to recap, stroke needs to have a dash of zero, a gap any size, and just make sure your capping is rounded. All right, so that's a mixture of the pencil tool and the stroke. Arrowheads, dots, dashed, and tribal tattoos. Next up is your homework. So in your exercise files, there is this file. It's called pencil02. Do the same thing we did in this exercise. Bring it in, file place it, lock it, and then do your drawing over the top. Now the theme for this one is going to be travel. So think wings and planes and maps and those sorts of things. So practice you the dotted lines. I wanna see a dotted, a dashed, and some of the kind of more I keep calling them tribal, but basically just those kind of nice profiled lines. Remember to adjust your pencil so that it makes your drawing look nice. Maps and planes and globes, that type of thing. Okay, I want you to draw over the top. Think artistic illustration type thing. And when you're finished, make sure you share it with us. Remember Twitter, Tuts Plus Design. I'm Dan Loves Adobe. And on Instagram, I am Bring Your Own Laptop. Hi there, welcome to this video. It's all about brushes in Illustrator. They turn boring strokes like this into handsome artistic strokes like these. All right, let's jump in and work out how to use them in Illustrator. All right, to get started, uh, you're gonna practice your skills from other videos. You are going to create a new document. This one's going to be portrait instead of landscape. And I want you to bring in this image here, file place it and lock it. Okay, it's called brushes one. So practice those tricks. Thank you, Lawrence Green for the image. Now we could be using our curvature tool or the pencil tool to work with brushes, any which way you create a line. It can be, you can do it with the uh, stroke around the outside of a circle. We're gonna use the pencil tool in this case. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my line no fill and a stroke of white so I can see it against my image. We're going for kind of an angel wing type thing. All right, so it's not, <laughs> it's okay. There we go. So once you've drawn some lines like me, we're gonna find our brushes. So first up, let's select it all with a black arrow. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. I'm gonna to go to my window and all your brushes are hiding. They're kind of like, remember we did the profile in the last one where we get that nice kind of like tribal design. Brushes are similar to that, okay, but they're a little bit more artistic. So in the brush libraries here, there's lots in here. Pretty much, I'd say 90% of them are pretty bad. Okay, the good ones are hiding under vector packs and these two are great and other nice ones are on artistic and some of these ones are quite cool. Okay, so we're gonna explore a couple of them and then I'll let you explore all the rest of them in Illustrator. So let's go to window all the way down the bottom to brush libraries, go to vector packs and let's use grunge brushes vector pack. That opens up. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger so you can see all the different brushes in there. Okay, and with these guys selected with my black arrow, all I need to do is click on one. Get ready, giant strokes. Cool though, eh? I love it, turns your kind of really, um, I don't know, I guess clip art style lines into something a lot more kind of hand drawn. 
Now, one thing by default is that they have kind of like a preset size. So once you've drawn them or applied them like we just have, over here under stroke, you're gonna to have to make them smaller. Now in this drop down, you can go down only so far, like 0 0.5, 0 0.25, it's considered a hairline. That's kind of small enough probably, but say you wanna go even smaller, you can actually just type it in here. So 0.25, I'm just gonna go 0 0.05. So I'm just typing it over with my keyboard, hit return on my keyboard, and now I've got a really nice thin line. Okay, I probably want it to be a little bit bigger, so I'm thinking maybe 1.5. Cool, huh? So I'm gonna select them and just go through these different options, and you can explore which ones you like the best. Okay, so... I was gonna keep clicking them while you watch. There we go, that's nice. So one thing you can do is, can you see I drew in lots of individual lines? If you end up drawing one long thing, there's nothing wrong with that, but you end up with, say I draw a wing on this side that's just one long piece. There's nothing wrong with it, except because it's one long piece, and I click on this, and I make it point, what do we decide, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, Okay, can you see this, the stroke starts all the way along here and has to stretch itself all the way along? You end up with this kind of like, I don't know, stretched stroke, whereas this there's, it's kind of a similar sort of design, but there's lots of little different things going on. Okay, because it's just one stroke beginning to end, whereas that is trying to stretch itself along this really long line. It's up to you what you're looking for. I'm gonna delete that one. All right, let's look at kind of one of the other packs. I'm gonna close down the grunge pack and I'm gonna draw some sort of halo. It's gonna be right first time, ready? <laughs> Not even close, that's better. Okay, so betterish. So I've drawn a line above a head, I'm gonna get a window, and there are lots of other stuff. Remember, um, so where is it? Brush libraries under vector packs. Grunge is cool, hand drawn is cool, and the other ones that I find are quite nice are chalk, charcoal, pencil, and ink. All the rest are okay. Some of them are downright terrible, but let's go chalk, let's go to ink because ink has a special kind of extra bit at the top here. So let's just look at some of these bottom ones. The cool thing about ink is that um, some of them, this dark ink wash, you can see it's kind of transparent, which is kind of cool, because it means if I draw another one, so if I grab the pencil tool again and I draw another one, I'm not sure that's, <laughs> it's back to being the donut, but if I make him the same stroke, can you see where they overlap? You start getting this kind of double, um, Oh, you know, the transparency, let's zoom in a little bit further. You can see where they overlap, they kind of double up and make a fuller color. You get what I mean, right? Now there are these options up the top here, so I'll show you how they work. They'll work slightly differently. So I grab my pencil tool and I draw a smiley face. <laughs> okay, it looks exactly like that. Let's draw, let's draw a crown. That's my crown. Okay, with it selected, and I go, ooh, these look cool. Weird stuff happens, you're like, that's not what I was expecting. Okay, so often these ones get used just by themselves. So I'm gonna delete my wonderful crown. So instead of like applying them to a stroke, you can just drag them out. So say this one here, just drag it out. Don't need a stroke, just, they're kind of like single use things. Just drag them out and they just kind of splot on. Okay, you can ungroup them, they're in a big group. Say you like all this, but you don't want this guy, you can go object, ungroup. You have to ungroup quite a bit. There's like a zillion groups in this thing. So I've ungrouped it. Still grouped, ungroup. See the shortcut there? Mine is Shift Command G on a Mac. Yours will be Shift Control G on a PC. I'm gonna keep smashing away at the keyboard because you have to ungroup it so many times. Now they're all ungrouped and I can maybe delete that one and maybe rotate that one to get a different size, copy and paste it. Get what I mean? So these guys just get dragged out. These get applied to strokes. All right, so we've done the angel in this one. I want you, for your homework, to work on brush 02. Okay, so we've worked on brush 01. This is the angelic, heavenly version. I want you to work and do something kind of evil with brushes 02. You ready for it? This guy. <laughs> All right, I'm sure the editor has cut out a lot of the laughing. I love this guy. I love dogs, I love pugs. This guy's the best in a little jacket. But I want you to, I'm thinking kind of devil horns, uh, pitchfork type thing. The opposite of what we had here. I want you to do it. It's your exercise. You don't have to make him evil. You can make him happy. Now, I don't know if it's just me or, but yeah. I found this guy. Thank you, Charles, <laughs> for dressing your pug up and sharing the photo on Unsplash. But this is your class exercise. Practice the drawing tools. I'm going to have to let him go so I can stop laughing. And I want you to go through and practice using some of your tools, pencil tool, use the grunge, try some of the other ones, and I would love 
for you to share it with me. This would be a perfect one for your Instagram. Okay, so remember on Instagram, I am bring your own laptop. On Twitter, we are Tuts Plus Design. And personally, I am Dan Loves Adobe. I'd love to see what you do with your pug. And I will see you in the very next video after you've done your pug homework. And we'll start looking at color in Illustrator. Hi there, this video is all about color. We're gonna look at your traditional RGB. We're also gonna look at something called HSB. Don't worry, it's really useful. What's really useful is this Adobe color theme. So we get to explore colors that maybe we wouldn't naturally pick just to help express our lovely logo in a few different color options. All right, let's get started. First thing is let's go to file. Let's go to open. And in your exercise files, there's one called color. Open him up. Okay, so you can use your version of the M uh, from the previous exercise, or you can just use this one here, doesn't matter. So we've kind of looked at color a little bit, but let's get into the nitty gritty. So first up, be in your properties panel, make sure you don't have to, but um, just so you know, I've turned back my smart guides on because it's gonna be handy for the rest of this course. So little ticks on. So when working with color, let's say I wanna change this color from black and white, I'm gonna pick a fill color. We've got our pre-made swatches. These are the ones that Illustrator give us by default. Then there's this option, the color mixer, which allows us to kind of pick colors from down the bottom here or type in say brand specific colors. Okay, say you know the RGB values for your brand, you can type them in there. You might also have this number. That's another way of describing RGB colors. You might have that somewhere in some sort of corporate spec manual and you can just type it in. If in here yours is CMYK, doesn't really matter which color field you're using, but if you do want to switch it, okay, you can tell I'm at RGB, says it at the top there, and I can change it by going to File, and down here to Document Color Mode, and going to CMYK, or switch it to RGB, up to you. Okay, let's say this random color that I ended up with, I like, but I want to make a darker version for it, okay, so I'm going to say, I like you, but I want a slightly darker version of it, okay? So I like it just a bit darker, but making it a little bit darker is quite tough. You need to slide these RGB sliders down and up uh, equal distances. So it's a little bit hard just to like lighten and darken a color. So I'll show you a cool little trick. I don't use RGB. I often switch it to, see this little palette option here, HSB. And you're like, oh man, another one. <laughs> see my gay RGB. Don't worry, HSB and RGB are the same thing. It's just a different way to describe the color. This shows you the mixture of red, green, and blue. This just shows you the hue, saturation, and brightness. And I find just, it doesn't matter if you're pro or entry level, I find it's easier just to grab this and go, let's change the hue, okay? Or change the saturation, how light it is, how kind of full on it is, and then this slider, the brightness, okay? Fully bright, and you can just darken it up. So yeah, pick a color. I'm gonna pick this color. I want it to be a little darker. I want to use it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my swatches. Remember, swatches are kind of pre-made colors. I can make my own though. So I've got that selected. I'm going to click on this new swatch. I can give it a name. This one's going to be called my M, M Pink. I can click OK. So now I can go to you, my friend. You are going to be that cool new swatch called, there he is there, M Pink. But I'd like to go to my Color mixer, which is currently set to HSB, and I'm gonna just make it a bit darker. Same with you, I'm gonna click on you, you're gonna be that same pink color. What am I clicking on? Click on him, he's going to be that pink color. If he's not there, you can go to your swatches, there he is there. Okay, and I'm going to say, actually, you're even darker again, and this one's the darkest version of them all. Mm, yep, 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 dark, 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 dark. Cool, so I guess that's just a helpful tip using HSB, it doesn't change the, the still red, green, and blue, just a different way of looking at it. All right, so that's one color option, the pink color option for the logo. Let's duplicate it, copy and paste it. I'm gonna have another version, I'm gonna line them up. That's why smart guides are back on, it's clever. See that, ah, oh, straight across. Let's look at, so color, right? I, if you, I get stuck doing the same colors all the time. Quite like these pinky, peachy, fiery red pinks. And I use kind of a teal green pretty much everything through my documents. So to kind of bust out of the same colors that I use every day. Okay, if you go to window, there's a cool little trick under color themes. So window, color themes. You need to be logged into your Creative Cloud account, I'm pretty sure. And you need to have patience, especially when your internet's real slow like mine. This little thing loads up, and what you want to do is jump straight to explore. Skip create, we want to go to explore. Cool. So in here, I've got the most popular colors that are being used in something called Adobe Color. It's an online web thing where people can 
upload their colors and vote on them. It's pretty cool, it's pretty color nerdy. But what the result is, I can say, I wanna see most popular of all time or this week or all month. And it's just really cool to see nothing other than just cool colors I could use. It's just really handy to bust out of say your, I don't know, the same colors you use every week. So I kind of like this one here. So the best way to use it is to click on it and say, add to my swatches. You can close this down or leave it up, but now I can say you, go to here, go to my little swatches one, pre-made, and there's that little group there. Cool, huh? So I'm gonna say you are gonna be used there. That's gonna be my darkest color. So I'm gonna go to fill, I'm gonna use that. Use you there. And you are going to be this color. Is that a good colorway? I don't think so. I think I messed that up somehow. But that's right. That's why we've got these options and we can play around with them. I'm gonna do another one. So I'm gonna duplicate him. Sneaky trick. Ooh, shows you a sneaky trick. So instead of copying and pasting, I drag with my black arrow. While I'm dragging, hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and that will drag out a duplicate. So instead of copying and pasting, just drag it, hold down the Option key, and you get a duplicate. All right. Um, so this guy here, I'm gonna do one more set of colors. I'm gonna speed through it. Okay, so I picked a color there and I also remembered to show you, <laughs> I just remembered now, go to explore and you can see this button here, it's a search option. So I typed in 80s and look at all these brilliant 80s colors. So you can type in cafe and bank and there's all sorts of things in there. So back to speeding it up again. All right, we're back. I picked some colors. Yeah, maybe with them. The cool thing about it is we can just keep duplicating these things and keep carrying on. I don't know why, I just I think it feels like it could be kind of cool if we move these down. I'm just using my arrow keys. Maybe grabbing this and just, just using my arrow keys to tap it to the right. I don't know, is that a better? I'm gonna pick one more 80s thing, I'll see you in a sec. All right, I'm back. That's my 80s version. And um, I guess that is the color basics. Okay, so we worked out to use RGB, switching it to HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness. Then we looked at this cool Adobe color themes. If you really enjoyed this, go check out color.adobe.com. That's kind of like the big web interface version of this. Go to explore and you can, I guess see, they're quite small in here. You can see them in a nice bigger web version. And what you've got to do now is take the M that you made earlier. Actually, you made a different letter, remember? It was an E or a J, something easy to draw. Okay, and I want to see your color options. So maybe do four or five colorways using your own colors and a mixture of color themes. And I'd love to see your examples. So drop me a note on social media. So I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, in this video, we're gonna take this boring background and add a beautiful gradient to it. Gradients are in right now. You might not be as excited by this particular gradient as I am, but, but I'll show you how to do your own custom stuff here in Illustrator. All right, let's get started. All right, you can get started with using any shape. We're gonna use though under File Open. I've got a file that we can all practice together with. It's the same one we got started with. It's called Getting Started. Let's click Open but it doesn't matter which file. We're gonna use uh, this square in the background just cause. We're gonna do type in the next video and this little fox I made with the shape builder tool. But this background here, I want it to be a gradient background. Gradients disappeared for a while and now they're back. They're cool, they're hip, let's do them. So black arrow, got my box selected and the easiest way to get started is go to fill and there's kind of a generic uh, gradient here. There he is there, there's a generic black and white, a generic weird yellow orange one and some sort of like the blue one. There's this one, there's, <laughs> there's some terrible ones built into it. But let's just start with black versus white and we'll change it. To change it, let's click on gradient options. Okay, and I'm gonna close that back in. Otherwise you can get a window, open up gradient from there. Cool, so I'm gonna move them just over here somewhere. So you can change the color and the direction and the type. So the type is linear, left to right, or straight line gradient or radial. 
okay, depending on what you want to do. Let's start with a linear one. Let's change the colors. We just need to double click these two little uh, swatches down the bottom here that look like houses. Double click the white one and you can pick your swatches or your color. I'm going to pick color and just kind of randomly pick a color to get started with. It's going to be green, of course, and double click the last slider to change the end one. Okay, and I'm going to pick another color. I'm going to keep clicking colors until I find one that I like. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, you can click it again so it jumps back in. So we've got two colors. We've got a linear. Let's change the direction. You can be very like analytical and say I want it to be top and bottom. Is it 90? No, that's not diagonally. <laughs> 180 is going to flip it across or top to bottom. Going to be 90. What I find is unless you want it those kind of stark degrees, I just use this tool over here. It's this one here. It's the gradient tool. Okay, that little square there above the eyedropper, click on him. And what ends up happening is that's the line from top to bottom. You can click, hold and drag anywhere you like to get a kind of more of a custom angle. Okay, that's kind of what I want. Um, who knows what angle that is? I'm just kind of like getting it across there. The other thing to note when you are using this, if I draw a really short one, look, okay, it starts at that green and ends at that dark green in a really short period. So you've got to decide whether you want it. You can start it out here and all the way past. So that absolute kind of dark green and the light green are actually off screen and won't be seen. Okay, or we'll do it really short. Now it's quite similar when we're using a radial gradient. Okay, it kind of sticks itself in the middle there, which is often not what I want. I want to do this kind of more, I'm going to click, that's the center of your gradient or your radial gradient. And I'm going to do something like this. So it's more of a kind of a wafty, um, I'm going to grab my black arrow, click in the background. Do you get what I mean? It's more of a, it's kind of like a linear gradient, but it's kind of a wafting. <laughs> All right, with it selected, back to my gradient tool. I'll show you a few other things we can change. You can invert it. Say you want, instead of uh, changing these colors, you can click on this button and you can reverse the gradient so it's dark in the middle and light around the outside. Now, I've just randomly picked colors. I'm not particularly happy with them. So you can go off and just keep picking them. Or remember in the last video, we looked at something called uh, Window and we went to Color Themes and we could pick different themes from that. Okay, but sometimes it's hard to work out what a good gradient will look like. So there's a cool little site called Gradient. So it's just gradient.com and the cool thing about it is just somebody's gone through this company here, Unfold, they've gone through and just picked cool gradients. So uh, on this first page here, I like this one. And the cool thing about it, how, do you, how to implement it, let's do that. So that's the beginning color, that's the end color. So I click on it, it tells me the color and it's done in this hexadecimal number, which is a hash and then six digits. So they can be numbers or letters. I'm just going to select it and copy it. So I'm using edit copy. So I clicked that or you can write it down, jump back into Illustrator. And what we can do is double click this first house and we don't have the RGB, but we have this hexadecimal number. You can type it all in there, even with a hash, hit return and there's that first blue color. So my second color is quite like this one, but I want exactly this. So I click on it, grab that, copy it back into Illustrator, double click this and paste it in, hit return, and I've got those two colors. I don't like radial, I'm gonna to go to linear. Then I'm gonna use my gradient tool, drag it out, that's the gradient that I want. Now, some of you are gonna ask how I did that, where I toggle between using Google Chrome and then back to Illustrator. You might know already, if you're on a Mac, it's Command Tab. So hold the Command key down, hit Tab, and it just kind of, you can keep tabbing along to find the application. I find it's just good for copying and pasting, Command Tab, Command Tab. On a PC, it's Alt and Tab. Okay, so hold the Alt key down and hit the Tab key and it will cycle through the open applications. Sometimes I gotta catch myself out doing shortcuts in these beginning courses, but yeah, you're probably gonna ask, so there it is. One last thing we're gonna do is, let's say we find, I'm gonna go to the second page and find one, see this one here? There's a lovely gradient that has three colors in it. What do I do if there's three colors? So let's get started. First color, double click him, paste him in, return. I'll do the in key, uh, in color. It's probably the same as that last one. Is it? Slightly different. But now I need one in the middle. All you do is, this is kind of like no man's land between these two swatches, just click there. Okay, and you can add another one. Double click it, jump in here, and grab that middle color. Cool. You can get rid of them. Okay, you can click on it and just click, hold and drag it down to like no man's land and it just disappears. It's magic. I'm gonna undo, put it back. I love my gradient. Now we've done it to a big rectangle. It doesn't matter what you do it to. You click on this piece, gonna close down color themes and you can start the same way. I can go back to my black and white, start adding colors or in this case, because I, I just did a gradient, I can click on that. It's gonna apply it. 
I can grab my, oh, awesome. <laughs> All right, that's it for gradients in Adobe Illustrator. What we'll do next is we'll start looking at type and fonts. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, in this video, we are going to look at how to create type boxes, how to work with fonts, and how to download good looking fonts from something called Typekit. Let's jump in and get started. All right, to get started, go to File, go to Open, and in your exercise files, there's one called postcard.ai. Open them up, and this is him. All I've done is put an image in the background that I got from Unsplash. It's from Hector Martinez, very cool image. And what we're going to do is look at type. So type and text and fonts, all of that stuff. So over here in your toolbar, grab the capital T, the type tool. And there are two kinds of text boxes you can create. If you just click once, it's called a point type box. All it means is that when I type, it just keeps on going forever. Okay, so it's really good for, say you're doing some text for this logo or a heading. Okay, just a nice simple text box, just click once. What I'll do is with it selected, I'm gonna select it white, so you get the idea. Okay, the other kind of text box is, let's grab our black arrow, click in the background so we've got nothing selected, grab the type tool, and this is better for body copy. It's called an area type box. You click, hold, and drag. And it just means it's got a boundary, okay, so that the line comes along and breaks and comes along to the other side. Again, back to the black arrow, means it's all selected, make it white. So depending on what kind of text box you need, you can draw a point type box and type on forever or drag out a box to get a specific width that breaks. You can see here, if I start typing, okay, you'll see it breaks onto the next line. Now, what is all the stuff that's in here? It's just something called Lauren Ipsum. It's just, there are actual Latin words that are all mixed up into a random order so that you as a designer can design the look and feel of say this postcard without having to use actual text. For me as a designer, often I don't have the text yet, say a copywriter is writing it. And also I'm getting kind of like visual concepts signed off by the client. And we don't want to use actual text because often the client can come back with like grammar and text amends when really you're after more style feedback, not text amends. You can leave it in there for the design, but obviously it gets switched out for the end. So we'll work on this body copy down the bottom here. We're going to kind of put it somewhere over here and we're going to look at two kinds of text. So two kinds of text boxes and two kinds of text. When I mean text, I mean fonts, okay? This is defaulting to the last font that I used. It's probably for you gonna be Myriad. Okay, Myriad is like the default font for Illustrator. I've got lots of Myriad. Myriad Pro is probably what it's gonna be. Or Minion, it's probably Minion actually. Minion Pro. Cool, so let's look at the fonts that are built into your computer versus the ones we can download from something called Typekit. So first up, with my black arrow, with this text box selected, I'm not gonna cover, over here in the properties tab, we're not gonna cover everything like font sizing, okay, mm, easy. There's the line spacing, okay, so they call it leading in here, okay, but it's just the spacing between the lines. There's the spacing between the characters, spacing between, sorry, spacing between words, spacing between characters, paragraph, left and right line. I'm not gonna cover all of this, because it's pretty basic uh, word processing. The one thing I will show you is that, see these little dots? So there's the character kind of panel here and there's these little dots. What could be in here? <gasps> more options. So you get a bit more detailed stuff. I can make it all capitals. There's subscript, baseline shift, all sorts of other stuff in here. Again, I'm not gonna cover it all because it's pretty easy to experiment with. Same with paragraph. We've got left, right, justification. Click on this. There's a bunch of other stuff in there. Okay, but I'll let you explore those ones. What I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna drop down my character panel and you'll see in here, um, these are all the ones that are built into my computer. Okay, I've got quite a few on my one, but go through, find one that you like. And um, one thing that can be quite useful, especially if you've got a lot of fonts on your machine like me and you're like, man, I just wanna find a, say a serif font or a sans serif. So a serif font is like this one at the top here. It's got the little serifs, okay? The little extra hanging pieces that are off the edges here. So say I want a good serif font. It's gonna cut it down. See this little filter? Drops it down to everything that's on my computer that's a serif font. You can kind of get a sample of the look of a serif font. Okay, so that's super cool. It's really handy just to go through and kind of cut down the fonts. So I want script fonts. Okay, you can see there is all the script fonts that I have installed on my machine. Some terrible ones like brush script to some nicer ones like lust script. You're probably not gonna have all of these, but it, just know that that filter can be really handy. I'm gonna go back to serif font and actually I'm going to turn it off, go to all classes, and in here I'm gonna type in the one that I want. It's the one I already practiced with, Gaudi old style italic. 
I'm going to probably close in the leading a little bit and get rid of that crazy thing I did there. I'll put a little full stop at the end of my fake text. And that's going to be my body copy. At the top here, we're going to look at uh, fonts that aren't from your computer, how to download them from something called Typekit. First, we're going to put some text. It's going to be all caps. Your, I'm going to put a return in, digital partner. Very generic postcard. I'm not sure who we're sending this to, but this M company that we've made that has, or whatever letter you've made it, I'm pretending it's a digital agency. It does some sort of creative work anyway. I'm going to pick a nice big font. Okay, and yeah, there we go. So I want to find a font that's not on my machine. So what we can use is something called Typekit. Now Typekit is a service that Adobe provide, but it's not paid, but it's complimentary if you have a Creative Cloud license. So I'm signed into my Creative Cloud license to use this software. And as part of it, they give me access to this thing called Typekit. So select your type with the black arrow, drop down the font, and there it is there, add fonts from Typekit. It's going to load up a web browser. It might make you sign in. You can see there I'm signed in, my smiley face there. And Typekit are just fonts, fonts that Adobe allow us to download. They're pretty amazing. There's some really cool examples along the top here to kind of get the creative juices flowing. Like, ooh, I want to know what this is. And you can say, get all of these fonts so it downloads. I'm going to ignore that and scroll down because this is the bit that's going to help me kind of find my fonts. So the first thing we can do is let's be on all libraries. And along the top here, I think it starts with choose sample text. But you can type in because we know we're going to be using the words your, I'm going to use caps, digital. Sometimes you pick a font and it's not till you actually start using it in your characters before you realize like, man, that doesn't look so cool. So you can see here this, I don't probably like it as a font anyway, but you can see the it's really weird spacing and in, in the word your in capitals. Same with that one. I'm going to lower the size preview so I can see it a bit better. And actually I might go from this grid pattern to the straight line so you can start to see all the fonts before you download them. Okay, you can use them commercially as long as you've got an up-to-date Creative Cloud license. The other cool thing to do with these fonts is this classifications over here. Instead of just searching through millions of free fonts online, you can go, actually I want to show the slab serifs. So a slab serif is considered the same sort of serif as we described earlier. It has these little feet, but it has really quite thick feet. I didn't even click slab serif, <laughs> it's the one I wanted. Okay, so you can see these kind of like university style, big slabby serifs on them. Hand-drawn fonts. You can choose whether they've considered, say you pick a serif font and you want, actually it's gonna be for body copy, so you pick a paragraph recommendation. So it's more of a okay, easy going font, easy to read. Or a heading font can get a little bit more exciting. Oh, gastromund. There are lots of other options in here. Let's say that I want a thin font because I, just decided I want a really thin font so I can fit lots of kind of title text. You can see, cuts it all down, super useful. There's different weights, whether they're full caps or no caps. Okay, there's lots of things you can work around. I'm gonna turn all these off and I've actually got a font that I've already tried to pick. So I'm going to go to the top and search. And this one's called League Gothic. There it is there. I liked it. We're good when I was making up this example for you guys. So once you've found a font, you can have a look and say, yeah, there's some different weights and there's an italic version. It's by Tyler Fink from the League of Movable Type, like they fight crime. And what we can do is we're gonna click on this one that says Sync All. And this is the beauty of Typekit. Kick back, Mac or PC, relax. You get a big tick. Somehow <laughs> I'm up to 337. That's the thing over here I'm looking for. It says you've added four fonts magically to your computer. It's that easy. Don't know how I have more than 100, but anyway. Let's ignore that. Let's jump back into Illustrator. And in here now, without doing anything else, then either close it down, I can type in League, and you can see these are the, that's the font that I want. There it is there. I'm gonna pick a lot bigger size. And I'm gonna play around with the letter spacing, but that's how to get and use Typekit fonts. A little underwhelmed with my font selection now. Look good in my little preview. There we go. All right, so you can skip along now. I'm just going to do some tidying up. I'm going to grab the edge here to kind of resize the text box. Now, probably what I want to do, it's interacting with the back. I picked an image that had a nice dark background, but I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to draw a rectangle that covers half of it. I got my smart guides on, so it should tell me where half is. Pretty good. I'm going to give it a fill of black. And this opacity here. See the opacity? I'm going to lower it down. And then... I'm going to select it with my black arrow and say arrange to the back to put it behind the text. 
you can kind of see what I'm doing there. I'm trying to use it as a as an element, a design element, but mainly just to uh, darken out the background so we can see my type better. All right, that's how to create text boxes and use Typekit fonts using Adobe Illustrator. Let's move on to the next video where we start looking at some effects like liquify and distort. All right, I'll see you over there. Hello and welcome to this video where we look at all the liquify tools in Illustrator. We're going to take text and we're going to make it all drippy and droopy. We're going to make it uh, explode, kind of crystallize. We're going to twirl it, more exploding, make it pucker, make it bloat, more wiggling. And then there's only seven tools. So this guy doesn't do anything, but the rest of them are pretty cool. Let's learn how to do that now in Adobe Illustrator. To get started, you can open up just a plain old document. I'm opening up a document from the exercise files. Okay, called, where is it? Liquify, there you are. Click open. The reason you can just, <laughs> it's just a blank uh, document, but I wanted to put this kind of like uh, gray to gray gradient in the background for no good reason, just kind of looks nice. All right, so we're gonna use type to do, like you saw at the beginning there. So we're gonna grab our type tool. Okay, we're gonna click once to get our point type box. We're gonna type in our name. I'm Dan Scott or Daniel Scott or Daniel Walt Scott. So I've typed in my name. I've gone back to my black arrow, just out of habit. And I'm gonna pick a font and a color and a size. So you do the same. Uh, I'm gonna use Lust. Which one of Lust? Go Lust script. And uh, this one here, Lust script, is from Typekit. You can go and download that. Um, I'm going to bump the size up to something like that works for me. In terms of the fill color, I'm going to pick just the kind of an off white to go with my gray moody background. All right, we need enough space because um, I've given you a nice long document here. It doesn't matter what size it is, but I want to put eight of these in here. So one, two, three. I'm going to kind of stack them next to each other. So once you get to here, I can kind of guess, so pick a font size that works so you can put a bunch of them on the page. All right, for this to work, what we need to do is we need to do something called outlining the text because this at the moment is editable text. We can't destroy it like you saw at the beginning without kind of breaking it apart. So the good thing is that we get to use our liquify tools. The problem is, is we can't change the spelling or the font or the size afterwards. So we need to break it apart. A really good habit to get into is to copy and paste it and just have a version up here for later on because it'll be months and you'll come back and you'll be like, oh yeah, what was that font? And you'll be like, oh, I have no idea because once you've broken it apart, it won't tell you that it's Lust script. So it's just handy to have over there. So this version here with it selected with my black arrow, go up to type and there's one in here that says create outlines. Okay, and watch what happens to it. Just kind of nothing really changes except now if I zoom in, okay, it's no longer editable text. It's telling me it's not Lust. Still looks the same, but I can't like double click with my type tool and try and go into it to change it. Where did we end up? Remember this from the beginning? We are lost. Things are gone weird. Okay, we're in something called isolation mode. Remember, click the arrow a couple of times to come back out. Because at the moment by default, it's all grouped. So if you double click it, you inside that group. All right, let's move on to the liquify tools. Actually, we can't, not just yet. So we've uh, broken it apart. We need a few duplicates. So I'm going to copy and paste it. Okay, and just kind of line it up and try and get four across the top and four across the bottom. I'm gonna use my trick where I'm dragging with my black arrow and I'm holding Alt down on a PC or Option on a Mac and just trying to get all of these. So what I might do is select them all over here. Okay, there's my line panel. I'm gonna pop this little double triple arrow, triple dot open, and go in here and say, I want to distribute them horizontally. Then I'm gonna drag out another copy. I've got loads to practice on. So select this guy, zoom in. And our liquify tools are in this kind of group here. The one on top is called the width tool. Click and hold him down. And we wanna start with the warp tool. Okay, and by default, I'm not sure your brush size is going to be the same as mine. So I'll show you how to change that before we get going because the brush size is quite important. To change the brush sizes, like we did with the pencil tool, remember how, anybody remember how we changed the pencil tool? Okay, we changed the smoothness and fidelity and stuff, remember? You double click it. So you double click it and we get our warp tool options. Okay, and width and height. Okay, let's just put in 50 points high, 50 points wide. So you deal with the width and intensity. Don't worry, don't worry too much about anything else in here. It's the size. For some reason you have to do the width and the height separately, but the intensity is quite important. 
That'll make a bit more sense as we go along. So let's click OK. I've got a size about this. I've got it selected. Okay, so my black arrow, got it selected. Go to my warp tool. Where are you, warp tool? Okay, and does this. So this one here, we're going to do this kind of like dripping, melting text thing. Okay, so you can see it's quite cool, huh? I love it. Liquify, I'm just kind of clicking and dragging across it. Drippy text, very cool. Okay, so I might go over with one kind of original pass, and then I'm going to go through maybe with a smaller brush. So remember, double click the warp tool and go in here, and I'm going to go 20 by 20. Okay, click OK. I'm going to zoom in a bit and do some like micro blobs within these bits because I want it to kind of look like it's dripping. Kind of dragging it out so I get a line and then kind of dragging it down. Totally illegible name now. <laughs> I love it though. All right, I'm going to leave it there and move on to the next tool. I lie, I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and do like a little drip hanging off the bottom. Maybe a couple of them. All right, that's the forward warp tool. Cool, huh? So we've done it with text. You can do it with any sort of drawing you've done. Remember our penguin from earlier on? You could open him up him and make him melt in the sun. But let's look at some of the other liquify tools. So I'm going to have this one selected with my black arrow. Click and hold down. And we're going to work our way through all of them. Um, let me show you these next two at least. And all the rest you could probably, once you've kind of worked out the basics, you can go and do your own. We'll do them all together, but let's look at the twirl tool. Now the twirl tool. Okay, let's double click it. And let's turn our brush size back up to, let's go to, I'm just picking 40, 40. You don't have to pick my sizes. You might have a different size font. Okay, you, you can adjust this. Intensity though, if I leave it at 50, watch this. It goes and goes quite fast. Okay, so if I like to, <laughs> you can add your own sound effects in there. Um, <laughs> so under intensity, I'm gonna turn it down to say 20%, just so that when it's twirling, it's not going so fast. Cool. You can kind of see what we're going to do, right? I'm going to grab this kind of thing that's already quite twirled and drag it out like this. And you get this kind of cool twirling thing going on. All right, I'm going to try and get this end down the bottom here. Watch this. If I click it once and just hold, I get a twirl. But if I click hold and drag it, it kind of starts looping back on itself and you can move it around. I'm just kind of mixing it up to, I don't know. It's getting quite complicated to see all the little blue dots. Those are anchor points and there's just like to make that curve work. There are so many needed. So it's stressing my machine out a little bit. If you're working on a really old slow machine, yours is probably going to freak out a little bit, but hopefully not. Totally eligible, but very cool. Oh, look at that. Oh, I liked it. It was good for a second. No, hang on. Oh. Okay, I'm getting myself excited. Look at that. That's cool. I'm going to click my black arrow, click in the background to get a good sense of it. You can see some cool stuff you can do. Now we're doing it with type again, illustrations, shapes you've drawn. Okay, super cool. Um, I'm going to click on this guy with the black arrow. I'm going to look at one more, look at pucker. Okay, so pucker and bloat, uh, one makes it smaller, one makes it bigger. So these kind of go hand in hand. And let's have a little look. I'm going to make, I'm going to make the brush size bigger. Teasing you. Come on, use it, Dan. Show us what it does. Okay, if I click on it, it sucks into the center. But the intensity is probably a little too strong. Okay, so double click it. And for some reason, even down at 20%, like this tool needs to get down to like 2%. I'm not sure who who decided how the intensity all worked, but sometimes 50%, sometimes 20, sometimes 2. So I need to play around with it. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm just clicking once with my mouse. If you click and hold, it works. That's kind of cool. It's a different kind of font now, but so, awesome. Let's see, we're in the middle of this stuff and go. Ah, oh, we're awesome. So that is the pucker. This last one here, you can imagine what the bloat tool does. So you can just skip on and just start playing with it yourself now. I'm gonna go through them all just so you get an idea of how I use it at least. I like to kind of like click in some of these, like use the target right in the center, okay, to kind of blob out bits. Still pretty cool. Right in the center of that. Mm, not my best. Don Scott. <laughs> yep. So let's have a look at some of the other ones. Okay. It is all about experimenting, right? So um, 
Scallop, Crystallize, and Wrinkle all end up not looking the exact same, but they, they crinkle the edges, okay? But they work slightly different ways. Uh, Scallop kind of like drags it in on itself, so it's kind of like blasting inwards. And then, say, Crystallize does the opposite and kind of blasts it out. Oh, I'm gonna experiment with different ones. Yep. Okay, and actually, I've said you had to have it selected. I always assumed you did. Okay, it's actually easier. Okay, learning is, we're all learning. You don't actually have to have it selected, and it's actually a little easier to work with when it's not selected. You don't see all the blue lines everywhere. So, Crystallize explodes out, Scallop goes in on itself, and then Wrinkle just kind of like makes the edges wrinkly. It does a bit of both. So, you gotta kind of give this one a wriggle around. Okay, and I might have to turn the intensity up on this one. You were like, it doesn't do anything, Dan. Okay, intensity at two, not so good. Let's go up to 20. Okay, and you can see it's wrinkling the edges. So it's going a bit of both, not as sharp. All right, that my friends is the liquify tools. What I would like you to do is, I would like to see what you've done with your name. Okay, so I would like you to type out your name, practice with some of these, and yeah, send me a screenshot or save a JPEG and share it with us on social media. So remember on Twitter, it's Tuts Plus Design, or me personally, I'm Dan Loves Adobe, or on Instagram, bring your own laptop. You're sick of that, right? I'll stop saying it. It's the last time I talk about social media. If you haven't done it already, you're not gonna do it. All right, Don Scott, we will see you in the very next video where we look at something similar. We're gonna bend and warp type rather than this kind of more liquify stuff. I'll show you what I mean in the very next video. I'll see you there. Hi there, and in this video, we're gonna take these super straight lines and bend them all sorts of different ways to get effects like this with just one click. We're gonna do it with the lines, we'll do it with type, we'll do it with all sorts of shapes. Same lines, one click effects, Beautiful-ish. Some of them are crimes against design. Some of them super smooth, super nice. It's really easy to do. Let's look at how to do it now in Illustrator. All right, to get started from your exercise files, look for a file called envelope distort. I'll let you go and open that one. You don't have to. All that I've got in here is I've got a bunch of rectangles. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five of them. I've put a tiny gradient in them for no reason goes from a lighter green to a slightly darker green. It's hardly noticeable, and I've just stacked them on top of each other. Now, the one thing that we need to do, okay, is that we need to group all of these together. So we're gonna select them all. So black arrow, draw a box around them all, or shift click them all, okay, and then go to object, and just make sure they're grouped. Now we're gonna go to our effects panel, and we're gonna come down to warp, and there's a bunch to pick from. Just pick the first one, okay, yay. Okay, and uh, make sure preview's turned on. Okay, and then you can just slowly work your way through all these different settings. I'll go through them real quick now so you can see what they all do rather than, rather than you having to do it. So arc does an arc. Lower arc kind of bulges out the bottom. Same at the top for arc upper. Arch, kind of like a rainbow. Uh, bulge, okay. Shell, I'm not gonna read them out. You can see them. Shell upper, I'm gonna read them out. Flag, I love. Wave, not so loved. Fish. Never find it useful, but really want to. Rise, look at that, some cool stuff, huh? It just means it's, it's just really hard to do some of this stuff with like the pen tool and the curvature tool. It's, it's often just easier to draw some shapes and then bend and twist them. So it's kind of like what we did in the last video where we lose liquify, but it's, I guess, a bit more consistent. So once you pick one, say I like the flag, and you can see you've got, you can do it vertically or horizontally, okay? And where it says bend, you can drag this left, and right, depending on how much bend you want. Okay, then you can play with these two different uh, horizontal and vertical distortions. You get some cool stuff, huh? Look at that. Okay, uh, ooh, look at that. Bends around on itself. So pick one, start messing around with these different settings. If you do pick one, and, because now if I go through, it's gonna remember these settings that I've picked, these kind of strange horizontal vertical. So sometimes you might have to go back into it and say, actually, put that back to zero, and put that back to zero, just to kind of, I get it, Guess make it a bit more how it came out of the box. Oh, cool. All right, so I'm gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick my flag. And I'm gonna make sure it's horizontal. And I'm gonna play around with that. So it's all kind of like coming out of this point here and flaring out. Ah, oh, cool. Let's click OK. 
because I want to show you a couple of things. One is you've done it and you're like, actually, I want to change that now. So I click on it. It's kind of weird, right? Because it's in uh, like the liquify tool we did earlier. You can't undo that. Like you, once you've done it and you've saved the document, it's done forever. Whereas this, you can kind of still see my rectangles across there. It's this kind of like active effect. What's cool about that is that you can go and change it. So in my appearance panel over here, you can see warp, uh, warp flag is applied. Click on it and go, actually, clients come back and said, like it. Can we lower it down a bit? And you're like, sure, easy. Can I go and change it? Yep, warp, pick flag, back to my lovely fish. All right, I cancel. One of the weird things that's gonna happen though is like, say I like this, but I want it kind of flaring off the top of the page here. So I wanna rotate it, look what happens. Click and rotate. I have to use the edge of the box here, okay? Not the edge of this uh, projecting kind of effect, but the, the kind of original rectangles here. And watch this, if I do it around this way, can you see? It's an effect that's trying to make it go horizontal still. So that's a bit weird. So I'm gonna undo, undo, till it's back to normal. To get around that, what you need to do is basically the same as what we did earlier with the type. Remember we outlined it, okay? But with an object, it's called expand appearance. So object, expand appearance, and you'll notice that it becomes, you know, you can't see those little stripy lines through the middle now. It's kind of just a full effect. It's committed forever. I can't change it now, which is a drawback. So you might wanna copy and paste it before you do this, but I get to rotate it. I'm gonna rotate it around. You can squish the ends. Okay, now it's just a regular old shape. I'm gonna rotate it back around, something like this. I'm gonna have type coming out the side for no good reason, just because I wanna show you how to do it with type and the pros and cons for that. So type tool, click on it, we're using, I use my name, I always use my name. You use your name. I'm gonna pick a font, I know what I want. I want Musio Slab, I like this one. Nice big kind of university slab serif. Make it nice and big. Now, you'll notice there that I didn't use the font size. Okay, kind of cheated. So there's the font sizes, you can type it in there, or what you can do is with your black arrow, like we did these shapes, remember if you hold down shift and grab the side, we can shrink it down. Same with the type. I often do this because I don't want it to be a specific size, I guess. I want it to be relative to something. So I need to kind of visually see it, just kind of make it the right size. All right, Giant Dan, we are going to envelope distort you. The cool thing about this is that it doesn't need to be grouped. Nothing needs to happen. Just do the exact same thing, effect, warp. I'm gonna pick one of these, I'm gonna pick fish. We love fish. Here we go. <laughs> Probably needs to be the other way. Okay, and the other way. Oh yeah, now, <laughs> fixed it. <laughs> Okay, so that's how you do type. The only other thing I wanna show you with type is that the type is still editable, which is quite cool. So we can double click it and we can get run and we can be, I don't know, Jan, it's my mum's name. Wal, it's my dad's name. And Ben is my brother's name. I only learned this doing this course and you're like, actually we all have three letters. We all cut it down to three letters anyway. Okay, and black arrow, cut in the background there. We've got a pretty spectacular design there. You might use it a little bit more subtly, but you can see it's quick, it's easy, it's updatable. If you need to get rid of the editability and you want to use, say, the liquify tool now, okay, we need to do the same thing as we did before with this, okay, the flags, object, expand appearance, and now it's no longer editable type, but it is that just kind of like fused shape that I can now rotate around. All right, my friends, that is warping in Illustrator. Often it gets referred to as an envelope distort. Doesn't really matter what you call it, it's pretty cool. But that is us for now. In the next video, we're going to look at patterns and repeating patterns. It's fun and I will see you in the next video for that. Hi there, in this video, we're going to take this shape that we made earlier, flip it upside down, and then turn it into a repeating pattern that goes on forever and ever and ever. We'll take a simple one and then we'll turn it into a lot, bit more abstract version of it. We'll flip it around and it'll just repeat on forever for us. It's great for backgrounds. I use it for printing fabrics, printing wallpapers, gift wrap. Repeating patterns are awesome and easy. Let me show you how to do it now in Illustrator. All right, to get started, go to your exercise files and you're looking for this one here called pattern. Open that up. Again, you can use this file here. It's just something we drew earlier, but you can use your example or just hand draw or anything, you could use our penguin or the secret creature you made. Now to make a repeating pattern, if we just want it to be the M, we just leave it as is. I'm gonna group it, so I've selected it all, object, group. I'm gonna copy and paste it, so I've got another version of it. And I'm just gonna rotate it around, okay, uh, just so that it's 
guess so I get a bit more of an interesting kind of wallpapery pattern. The other thing you need to do is that whatever size it is now, so this is my US letter um, size, this is going to be the size of the pattern. It's quite hard to adjust the size of the pattern after you've made it. So if this is the size you want it, leave it that, but I want it to be a kind of a small pattern. Okay, so I'm holding, uh, selecting them both, holding down shift, shrinking them down, I got them there. So I'm gonna select them both, I'm gonna go to window, and I'm gonna go to this unlikely character here, it's called pattern options. Doesn't seem very exciting, right? But this is where the excitement is hidden. So window, pattern options, and this opens up. Another big problem is like, hey, here's the pattern options. Nothing works. You gotta click this little hamburger menu here, click on him, go to make pattern, and life comes good. Don't worry about this, it said it's added to the swatches panel, we'll talk about that in a second. Click OK. And that, you can kind of see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit now, okay, is my pattern. It's already kind of cool. Imagine that in the, say it's our brand for our logo, imagine this getting turned into wallpaper that is like in the reception lobby boardroom thing. Cool, huh? Um, a couple of things that I like to do is, you've probably got this on, dimmed copies. It dims the ones, like, so those are my two originals, and these are the repeats out here, and you can't really touch them, and it dims them for some reason. I'll just turn them off, so I wanna, I wanna give it the full look. And show the edge, I don't really need the edge either. I wanna see what the pattern looks like. How many copies? So it's gone five by five. I wanna go a big, what's the biggest you can go? Five by seven, nine by nine. Okay, just so it kind of spreads out a bit further. It's just a preview, it will actually continue on forever. Okay, but just in this like little preview world, uh, it'll just show, it'll show you nine by nine. So what else can you do? Um, the grid is interesting, but not exactly what we want, right? Go to the where it says tile type and start playing around with these options. This is where it gets quite cool. Brick by row, <gasps> uh, brick by column, looks the same. Uh, brick by hex by column, <laughs> hex by row. Oh, that's kind of cool. Once you do find one, you have got some adjustments. You can play around with this. So my one's 0.7 by 0.2. I'm gonna go one by 0.3. Don't worry too much about what these measurements are. It's kind of a bit of an experimentation. Maybe one by one. Nope. <laughs> 0.5 by 0.5. Oh, it's overlapping. Let's do some cool stuff. Okay, I'm missing about now and it's not looking so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overlap, you can decide on how these guys overlap if they do get in really small. So watch this, if I go point 0.2, can you see they're overlapping now? And I can I can tell it who goes on top. So you, you know, wow. Well, you can kind of see them in the background there. Are you on top? Who's on top? That works for me. Let's name our pattern. This one's gonna be the M Company. Did we even name this thing? I don't think we did. It was just a brand we kind of fake made. Momentum, it's the Momentum Agency. I'm gonna go back to Grid. I'll play around with this a little bit. I'll get the editor to fast forward while I mess about. All right, we're back, and you would have noticed I spent ages doing that. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so what happens now? You're like, okay, I've done it, I like it. Uh, what do we do? This is the really weird thing about this tool. You're like, great, uh, where's the button? It's way over here. Can you see in the top left here? Okay, we've seen this before when we used isolation mode, but in this case, they're using this little gray bar, and we wanna have this one that says done. We say, I'm done, thanks. And you're like, oh, what happened? <laughs> Where did it all go? Okay, so what happens is you use these as your like creation tools. You make them and you make your pattern and that little pop-up window at the beginning says, don't worry, we'll make it and we'll stick it in your swatches panel for you. And that's where we need to go find it. So we don't need these anymore. I'm just gonna put them over here because I don't know, I don't wanna delete them for no reason. I'm gonna draw out a rectangle, any sort of, well, any sort of size. I'm gonna cover the whole background. Don't worry about the fill color or maybe give it a stroke, give it no stroke, but the fill color is where we're gonna change it. This thing popped up. You can have it open, it doesn't matter, because the same things appear in here when you go to swatches. It's up to you. So I've got my rectangle selected, I've got the fill color clicked, and there he is there. See that teeny tiny little M company? There he is there. There is my fill. Cool, huh? And that is my crazy repeating M pattern. I love it. All right, next thing is let's edit this pattern. Um, let's first of all change what's in it physically and then we'll change the size. So if you go to fill, so I've got my, uh, I've got the big rectangle selected. Go to fill, there's this option that says pattern options or you can go to window and pattern options is down here. Okay, it doesn't matter which way you go. 
and nothing really happens. Go up to the hamburger menu and say, I would like to edit this pattern. And we go back into that kind of like mysterious world here with the gray bar at the top. But now what it lets us do is let's click on this one that says show tile edge, because that's kind of the boundaries of this repeating tile. So what I can do is I can copy this guy here and paste it. So I've got another guy. You can see what it's doing over on all these different places. And now you can get all kind of like funky with copy, pasting another one. I'm gonna do this more, I guess, trying to go for random. Just kind of moving it around so it fills in some of these gaps. Maybe one more. I want to do a small one, but I think I won't. And this is where, because there's lots of overlapping now, um, say, depends on which color is your primary color. You can start messing around with like who's on top, who's on bottom. Um, yeah. Makes a bit more sense uh, when you've got them overlapping. Now we've done it with the same repeating pattern. Okay, if you've seen patterns with, I don't know, it's a it's a sea theme and there's a fish and then there's a starfish and there's a uh, bucket and spade. Draw these things and then kind of move them around to fit the gap. When you are done, just like we did before, click this random button up here, done. And then like it, what it didn't do before is it didn't uh, just disappear and you have to reapply it because we're, we've already got a big chunk of it applied. It's starting to do some cool, I don't know, Jack and the Beanstalk stuff. I think it's a little bit more abstract now for our, uh, actually what I might do is, actually I'm gonna go, <laughs> I'm gonna go and adjust this. <laughs> you don't wanna see me doing it. Um, I'll do it at the end if you wanna hang around. But what you do need to see is what happens when you try and resize this box. Watch, when I resize it, okay, you can see it gets smaller, which is kinda weird. Black arrow, grab this rectangle, make it smaller. It resizes with it, which is not quite what I want, or it is like one or the other. Okay, sometimes you do want it, sometimes you don't. Where do you go and change this? Okay, so with it selected, actually don't need it selected, go to window and go to this window that, uh, option that says transform. The transform panel opens. Okay, and in here, there's a little fly out menu. It's kind of, it's really hidden. Like you gotta bookmark this video if you wanna do this, if you're loving this pattern stuff, because like, man, I only remember this because I have to teach it so many times where they hide some of these bits. But can you see here it says, um, transform both. So when I'm re when I'm resizing something or transforming it, it's going to resize both the object and the pattern. What I can say is actually I want to transform just the object only, please. So it means when I resize this now, you see, kind of a little bit more. That may be what you need. The only trouble is it's on forever. So next project, a month later, when you start doing something, you're like, oh, why is it only? Uh, you know, why isn't it rotating? Okay, so what you can do and what I do is as soon as I've kind of got it to what I want, I go and turn it back to both. Now I get to resize it and kind of get it to a smaller size, turn it back to pet, uh, object only and I can resize this up and it will keep repeating forever. Now a couple of things before I get into <laughs> playing with my baton is I am going to like say I've got a new document. Okay, I'm just going to use all the defaults, click OK. And you'll notice over here in my grab a rectangle, fill it, go to here and you're like, where'd it go? It was there, it's gone. Okay, I've got this tasty treat. <laughs> it's one of the default ones from Illustrator. Okay, and what you can do to get it from this document to this one, okay, is that in this first document, click the tab. Just grab this rectangle. Don't worry too much about it. Just copy it and click in here and watch. Oh, well, let's just paste it. Paste it anywhere. You can even delete it. I don't need it anymore. Okay, but that whole just bringing it in will lump it into the swatches of that document. Now there is a long winded way of going and saving out swatches and loading the back in again. So you can save out swatches using this ASE format and then open that library and bring it back in. It's just a really long way. Um, all you need to do is just copy and paste it from a document that already had it. Anyway, one last thing, I keep saying one last thing is something called Spoonflower. Let's jump to that. All right, so this is Spoonflower and basically it's a fabric printing business. They do all sorts of stuff, but mainly fabric. So you can design your pattern in Illustrator. I'm not gonna explain exactly how they, you know, upload it and get it ready for this. It's pretty easy. There's a how it works and you can go through their process. But basically you just upload your design, pick the fabric, okay, and they'll print it on any sorts of fabrics or actually print it on to actual things like uh, like pillows and stuff pre-made. But what I do is I just get it printed onto actual fabric. Okay, you can pick your fabric, say here. Um, so you upload your design, choose your product, print your order. You can see here, there's some basic cotton and all sorts of cool fabrics that it comes out on. Okay, all sorts of cool stuff. 
what I did when I originally got started with them is they've got a swatch pick, a sample pack. Okay, so you can get a, I guess a feel for all of the different fabrics before you order them. Okay, and yeah, you print it and they, they print really small runs, which is quite cool. They print by the meter or by the yard. Uh, yeah, and it just turns up and you can start sewing it into things. I mainly get things like wallpapers done for businesses or wrapping paper for maybe corporate gifts or your own personal gifts. Anyway, that is Spoonflower. And that is gonna be us for doing this amazing pattern making. I am now gonna close this down and mess about with my pattern to try and make it less like a beanstalk. But if you hit me up on social media with the things you've created, take a little snapshot. I'd love to see what you've done. After you've done that, I will see you in the next video where we vectorize an image. We turn it into like a cool vector, hand-drawn illustration with a click of a button. All right, I'll see you over there. Hi there, this image we're going to create kind of a vector poster effect. We're gonna take regular old images like this guy, I'll zoom out a bit, and turn them into cool stuff like that. Same with this, took an image, made it kind of like a three color screen print style. And then we did this handsome man into a bit of a stencil. Then we made it white and it gets all creepy. No matter what you wanna do, it's all pretty easy. Illustrator does all the hard work. Let me show you how to do it now. All right, to get started, just create a blank document. Okay, any old size. And let's go to file and place an image. File place. In your exercise files, grab the one called Live Trace, and let's click Place. Now it's probably easiest to click, hold, and drag this out so it fits within your page. Okay, or just resize it if it comes in nice and big. So with it selected with your black arrow, okay, over here in your quick actions, there's this option called Live Trace. Kick back, relax, get ready. Actually, you know, click it and pick one of these. Let's click three colors. Now kick back and relax. Now it depends on your machine. Mine's pretty good hardcore machine uh, in terms of a laptop, it's still gonna take quite a while. So I'll get the editor to speed this up. I'll see you in a sec. All right, we're back. That took uh, maybe another 60 seconds or so. It's not very long. If you've got a, a hand me, hand me down laptop and your computer starts making funny noises and the fans come on and it starts overheating, uh, just know that's real common. Like it's quite a stressful thing it has to do. So you might have to just relax and let it do its thing and come back after a cup of tea. But it's pretty cool, huh? It's gone through and turned this into a three color document. Let's use colors from the document to make them. Let's look at how to adjust the options. So hopefully you've still got it selected. Over here it says trace image. You can go through the presets. I'm not gonna go through them all because it takes a long time. We'll go through one or two more in the later in the class. But let's say we like this, but we just wanna change it a little bit. See this little option here? It says open the trace panel. Okay, and this big old panel opens up. Actually yours is probably looking a little bit more like that. So make sure preview is on. And what you can do, you can see here, I can adjust the colors. Okay, uh, I can decide whether it's black and white or grayscale. Along the top here are some other kind of presets you can click on. The trouble with them is that they do take a while once you do click on one of them. So let's go through and pick one of the other presets. Let's go to six colors and then we'll do one more before we go. We'll go fast. All right, so now pick six colors. It's quite cool. I love it. So there's some really cool stuff around here. The bike looks awesome. Okay, so uh, a couple of things I wanna show you before you go off and start practicing with all of these, because there's gonna be a time where you're like, actually I wanna like, because it's what happens with Live Trace, it's this effect that's always kind of running and it can really stress your machine out when you try to adjust things. If I rescale it down now, it's gonna freak out. Okay, so what we need to do, uh, kind of like what we did with, remember the envelope distort where we had the just the straight lines? Okay, there were rectangles and we had to eventually go up to object and go to expand appearance. There's a similar sort of process for this. The trouble is, is that you can't have all these presets anymore. So you've, that's the kind of trade off. Let's close this down. With it selected, it's the word expand over here. We'll click on expand. Some more initial pixel clustering. Wait for that to finish. All right, so it hasn't made a blue outline just because it's selected. So click off in the background and nothing really changed except now what I can do is remember black arrow moves everything around in one big go. Okay, a little bit slowly. And um, let's grab the white arrow, click off in the background. And now we can say, click on a shirt once and then drag it over. Remember the white arrow moves little pieces and I can delete it or I'm gonna put it back and grab this chunk and take this out. Cool, huh? 
What we also might do is let's say we've got this kind of accent color in a shirt. If you click on one of them, say you want to change all the blue, uh, you'd be there for a long time, right? So what you can do is click on one of them with the white arrow. If it's not working, just click off in the background first, then back on it, then go up to select. I would like Illustrator to select everything that has the same fill color. Cool, huh? It's, an, it's a cool little trick. And it will go through the whole document and find that color. Now I can go to my fill and I can say, you are now pink. Click off in the background. It's a nice quick way for doing that. Now we've done it for this live trace, but that select same color I use quite a bit through Illustrator when I'm doing maybe a design, maybe it's a website design or something like that. And you're like, I want to change this color, but it's being used throughout your huge design. You can do select same color. Okay, so do your live trace, get it how you want, and then click expand. Then use your white arrow to mess about with it. One last thing I want to show you is it's really cool to kind of do a stencil with this. We've done a kind of a full color image. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull a little machine struggling with this uh, just because there's so many paths in here those anchor points there's if I select it all with the white arrow kind of has a seizure look at it doesn't even want to select it because there's just so many anchor points that make up this image that it's going to look cool but it's going to stress your machine out a bit <laughs> we'll fast forward this all right we're back uh so many dots to select even clicking off brings up the bouncing ball of doom all right we're back so we're going to bring in another image <laughs> once this ball's gone All right, we had to fast forward that up. That took a little while. I leave it in there kind of just so you know, like if your machine's going really badly, don't worry. I got a pretty good Mac here and it's still stressed. Mainly because I'm doing video recording, but even if it wasn't, it's still pretty bad. So let's bring in another image file. Let's go to place. And let's say I want to use me, my smiley face there. So the one called Daniel Walter Scott, we're going to place that image in here. But I want it to be that stencil like you saw at the beginning. So I can go through and say, actually live trace it. Let's go to black and white logo and it's gonna half work. But what I really wanted was kind of me by myself without the background. And the way to do it is we need to jump into Photoshop. Now I know not everyone has Photoshop skills. Probably a lot of people will. If you don't, they, I have a Photoshop course here on Envato Tuts Plus, go check that out. We'll just do some real basic stuff. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna open that same image up in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, file open, where is me? Daniel Walter Scott, it's me with my microphone being in shot. Anyway, I want to cut myself out. A really quick, easy trick is select and subject. It's a really cool new feature in Photoshop. If you've got an old version of Photoshop, you might have to use the quick selection tool. And magic, huh? It's a little hard to see often in these videos, the marching ants around the outside, but it, if you can see them, it's done a pretty good job. And because this is a stencil, I'm not worried. Like I just want a real basic selection. If you don't have that cool little select subject option, just use this tool here. It's called the quick selection tool and just kind of work your way around. I lost a little bit of my hair. I can't lose any of my hair. I've lost too much. I need this tiny bit on the top. <laughs> I need to do back in there. Okay, so any which way you get a selection, I'm gonna use a real cheap trick. No, I won't, I'll do the proper way. With the background selected, see this option here? Make a mask, it's this, uh, little square with a circle in it, it's cut out the background. Don't worry that it's all a bit chunky over here. We should fix it, but it's not going to make any difference to our stencil. All right, let's go to file. Let's go to save as, and I'm going to save it on my desktop and my class files. Daniel Walter Scott, click everything's okay. Close down Photoshop, back into Illustrator. So if you tidy it up first in Photoshop like that, just delete the background. If you're like, man, Photoshop's new to me and I'm not gonna go do the course, uh, just use the eraser tool and just delete the background because the stencil doesn't need to have a perfect edge. You can do something simple like that. So file place, I'm gonna bring in the image that we put on our desktop. Okay, Daniel Walter Scott, there he is. Drag it out and because I'm all by my lonesome now, I can go through and do live trace, go black and white logo, and just doesn't have any of the background. Cool, huh? Now the weird thing is, I think it's because we brought in a PSD instead of that original JPEG, but you notice the options have disappeared over here. Yours might not do this, mine seems to. So if you can't find those cool options that we get to change it from, remember, three color to a six color, you can get to it the long way by going up to window and go to, mm, it's called trace image. Okay, and you'll get back into this little option. If you know why it's not happening, message me on social media. I'm not sure why. Doesn't matter if it's the black arrow or the white arrow. Anyway, we can get the long way by going to Window, Trace Image, 
And what we can do is, this threshold is quite important when we're doing stencils, which is I lower it down and I can see a bit more detail. Okay, or at least you can kind of see what it's doing, right? It's kind of lessening the dark areas. Okay, you can just kind of drag it up and down to find where it looks good for your stencil. <laughs> That's pretty good. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to something. Can I see my eyes in any of these? This is not a real good balance, but you get the idea, right? You can tidy it up in Photoshop and then get this kind of nice cool stencil thing. I want the glasses and the eyes. That's close enough. Now remember, once you've finished, you need to expand this thing, which is not over here anymore. So we're gonna have to use the long way. I'll leave this in the course because you might have the same problem. Normally though, they're just over here. You can do the options and do the expand, but that's the long way. Expand these guys. And now I can grab my white arrow. And because at the moment I've got this black stuff and this white stuff in the background, I'm gonna click on white. What I mean by that is, watch this, if I drag the whole thing, can you see it's actually a white background? So I'm gonna move it over here to make it a bit easier. Grab my white arrow, click on it. I could delete it, but there's all these other white areas. So remember our trick, I'm gonna undo, select any bit of white, then remember, select same fill color. Look at us, then hit delete. Now we've just got my handsome stencil. All right, so that is how to vectorize an image. We did a kind of a stencil style, plus I guess a color kind of vector redraw style here. Your homework is to do your own image. Either go to Unsplash and find another cool image, or find a picture of yourself. Could be your dog, could be your kids, and yeah, make sure you share it with me. I'd love to see what you do. But for now, that is us. We are going to jump into the next video where we look at exporting for print and for web. All right, see you in a bit. Hi there, in this video, we're going to export our postcard. We're gonna export some icons. We're gonna make JPEGs. We're gonna make PDFs. We'll show you how to make real high quality ones for your printer, low quality ones that can get downloaded from a website or emailed, plus how to export individual icons, PNGs, SVGs. It's all very exciting. Enough talk, let's get started. All right, to get started, if you go to File Open and go to your Exercise Files, there's two files we need. Okay, files even. Export Print and Export Web. Open both of those up for me. One looks like this, one looks like that. Okay, let's start with Exporting Print. So just click on the tab on the top. And let's say our, uh, our goal here is to send this out to get printed. We want 100 copies done at our local print shop. The most common format for sharing with printers is a PDF. We'll do a JPEG as well, but a PDF will give you better results, retain some of the vector goodness inside of these images. Don't worry too much about it, but just know that PDFs give you really high quality, really small file sizes. Now to do it, it's kind of weird. You go to file and you think you go to export, but nope, and you go to save as. Go to save as. And the big thing we need to do is down the bottom where it says format, change it to PDF. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on my desktop in that class files folder that we made. I'm just gonna leave the name alone and click save. All right, so this is where all the magic happens. And uh, up the top here where it says PDF preset, change this to high quality print. So that's step number one. The only other thing you need to do is where it says preserve illustrator editing capabilities. Turn that off. Why? Because with that on, there's actually no difference between this uh, PDF that we're making and the Illustrator file. It has all the like working backend stuff that only Illustrator needs. Your printer doesn't need it. So with that off, it makes the file uh, not as smart, let's say, but it makes the file sizes absolutely small. And there's nothing that the printer actually needs. Okay, so don't worry about it. Just set it to high quality uh, print, turn that off and hit save PDF. Uh, Illustrator is going to say, hey, you turned that thing off, but I kind of half explained it there. We just don't need all that extra information for a PDF. It does its thing. Let's check out my desktop. Uh, I've got that class files and there it is there, exporting PDF. It is only 0.6 megabytes, teeny tiny. Let's have a look if we don't do it, just so that you, because if you're like, man, that's a big PDF, it's probably because you've accidentally forgotten. I'm going to do it V2. You've forgotten to turn that off. So I've left it on just to see what it does. Let's have a little look. Takes a lot longer to make, but let's have a little look. I've got a V2. One's 31 megabytes and one is 0.6 megabytes. So huge difference. They will both print exactly the same for the printer, just with a lot of information they don't need. All right, so that's how to get a like a high quality looking real good print. Let's look at doing, uh, say something that's gonna be a PDF still, but it's gonna be something that's maybe downloadable from your website or something you email out to clients. So let's look at doing, it's a very similar process, save as. This one's going to be my uh, low res version. 
Same thing as before, PDF. And all we need to do though is at the top is go to smallest file size. Make sure that's off, still off. Click save. It says you've turned the thing off. I said, I know. And on my desktop here, you'll get a, a lot smaller version. Low res, can you see? That was 650 kilobytes. That is only 99. And if we have a look at it, it looks fine. It's a lot smaller. It's teeny tiny. And I guess in today's world, half a megabyte is just fine. So you might not even have to get down to that really small file size. But we've just got one page. You might have a huge document with all sorts of things going on. Now, one thing that might happen is it's not unlikely, but you might get a chance where you've you've set it to the high quality and it's still coming out really ugly. And you're like, what happened? You can go up to effects and go to document raster settings. Okay. And that might have been switched earlier on to something like screen, very low quality. You can turn it up here. Click OK. Um, yeah, I've had students run into that in the past. Let's say now that I want a JPEG, and this JPEG could be going for print because you're just like, I don't like PDFs. I need a JPEG for some reason. Or it needs to be uploaded to a, say, your WordPress blog, and you need a JPEG. Again, they like to hide this in a weird spot. Let's go to File, let's go to Export, and we're up to this one that says Export for Screens. You can use Export As as well, or all three of these work. This is just the newer one, Export for Screens, and it's just really handy. I want to export this one here to this tab. Yours probably defaults to Artboards. I want to export this Artboard. Where do I want it to go? I'm going to click this little Browse button. I'm going to stick it on my desktop in that same file. Click Choose. What kind of format do I want it to be? Okay. You, this case, JPEG's probably going to work perfect. We'll do PNGs when we look at web in a minute. But basically, this little quality slider here, try 100. And what you're looking for, that's like as good as it can get. You might have to lower it down if the file size is getting too big. But JPEG 100 is going to look nice. You might actually just add a scale. And instead of scale, we're actually going to turn it back to 1 and actually just say, I want a JPEG that's 50 as well. So it's going to give me two options when it exports. And I can compare the two just to see the file size versus the quality. All right, let's click export upboard. And hopefully now I've got upboard one and upboard one minus 50. That means it's just the half quality one. And you can see the size is about half. And let's look at the two resolutions. One, two, one, two, one, two. Hard to see the difference. So either of those work for me. Let's look at something doing something slightly different. So PDFs are best, JPEGs are fine, but let's say I wanna export like lots of individual parts like this. I don't want this to be a full white document with these guys in the middle. I want them to have this kind of transparency so I can see through them. So that's the first thing. I need to make them something called a PNG. But also, I don't wanna export them like, what a lot of people do is they'll like delete this, then export that one. Okay, and then delete everything but this one, and then export that. So. Exporting them individually is a new little trick that um, Illustrator does. And they like to hide it in a completely different space from all the other things. Okay, and it's this option here under Window. And go to this one that says Asset Export. So this little panel here, I'm just going to drag it to the side. So all you do is, I've got, grab this one here. Just click, hold and drag it. You can't drag the center because there's no fill on it. You have to grab the edge. So black arrow, grab the edge, drag it over here. And there he is there. So we drag all our icons in. We give them a name. This one's called my palette. Man, I can't spell. <laughs> That's the French person. That'll do. <laughs> okay, so drag this next one in. I can spell funnel. Here we go. In your face funnel. All right, flame I can spell. Let's have a look at flame. So um, what I'm going to do is this is actually in two parts. So I'm going to select it with my black arrow, both of them. And then I'm going to drag both of them in and wrong. Okay, can you see because they weren't grouped, it went, oh, these must be two separate shapes. Okay, so I am going to undo that. And then you see two separate shapes. But if I select them both, go to object, go to group first, then drag them in, and then I can call it flame. Knowing that we can drag more than one in, I've grouped all of these ones for you. So I'm going to grab all three of these and just drag them all in. You can see how it gets a little easier with a bit of uh, practice. Uh, this one's my brush. This one is my stamp. Yes, I can spell all of these ones. Pencil, pencil, that'll do. Okay, so you've got them all in here. Nothing really has happened. So this is kind of like a holding area. Okay, what I need to do is I need to select all of these. Look, when I click it, can you see what went blue? The editor will zoom in. It's a little hard to see on your own screen. 
you can click on individual ones and I can pick, oh, I want it to be a JPEG or I want it to be a PNG. What I'd like to do is just do them all at the same time. So hold shift and just click them all until they're all blue. All right, now down the bottom here, you've got to decide on the format. Now, let's pretend we are going out to our website and we want transparency. So a JPEG, unfortunately, doesn't allow transparency. It'll put a white background in here. So if you export it, you'd be like, hmm, white background, weird. So you need to be this PNG. That will give you your kind of transparent background. But there is a new format that's getting more and more popular called SVG. You could do PDF here as well. Okay, but SVG would be, say I'm sending it to a web designer or developer for icons for a website. They might go, you might have a chat with them. They're kind of new. Like the developers I know, half of them know exactly what an SVG is and how to use it. And the other half are like, huh? So I just send them JPEGs. What you can do though, if you're unsure or if you're unsure or if they're unsure is, see this thing that says add scale. We're not gonna scale it out. We're gonna go back to one time. So they're both the original size, but we're gonna do this. So it just means one's gonna be PNG, one's gonna be SVG, and it's just gonna make two copies for you. You can send them both and they can just use whatever they like. So let's click export. In my class files, I'm gonna make a folder just to keep them all separate. So these are my web icons. Click create, click choose. And hopefully now on my desktop somewhere, I've got web icons and you'll see I've got two brushes. One's a PNG, one's an SVG. And if you're like, what is an SVG? It's basically a vector graphic. Not everyone knows what a vector graphic. Go go check out a video here on uh, Envato Tuts Plus about vector versus bitmap. It'll explain it with a lot more detail. But a PNG is a certain size. And if I scale this bigger, it's gonna get all yucky and distorted. But an SVG, if I scale it up, you see it can scale up to the size of a mountain or a teeny tiny size, and it's still very, very small, a lot smaller than the PNG. So that's getting used more and more around the world. SVG is scalable vector graphic. PNG is, I have no idea, it's some sort of group. <laughs> Photography network group, I'm guessing. And the cool thing about it is you can see you've got all these icons now all ready to go. Gets even better when you start updating them. Watch this, if I go through now and I change the stroke color of this one to pink. Can you see it changed over here? Then I hit export. Actually, I'll just do them all. Let's do them all. Select them all of them, click on stroke. They're all pink. Can you see the updated here? Export, ah oh, man, cool, huh? Think of all the time you can save and they all should be updated and be pink. Just make sure they're grouped, give them a name, learn how to spell. And that, my friends, is how to export for both print and for web using Adobe Illustrator. All right, I will see you in the next video where we say goodbye. Don't skip the last video though. I've got some useful parting information. I'll see you over there now. All right, welcome. You made it to the end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the class. I hope you really uh, love Illustrator as much as I do. Um, the next steps for you, so you've done a really good kind of general introduction to Illustrator, okay? And the next steps for you is to maybe look at some more specific things. So um, here on the side, there are some really cool other tutorials for Illustrator. So go to search and just search for Adobe Illustrator and you'll find there's some really cool stuff. Daniel White's got some cool stuff and Jonathan Lamb has got some really cool tutorials here. Uh, if you want to see some more stuff from me, I've got uh, kind of like, this is the Illustrator for beginners. I've got a Photoshop for beginners. So if you are new to it or know it a little bit, go check that one out. I'm Daniel Scott here. Um, so what else can you do? Uh, your homework, okay, or the projects. Remember to post them on the forum. Remember, go to the forum and search for Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator for beginners, or post them to social media. Remember on Twitter, there's two accounts to tag. There is uh, Tuts Plus Design, and also uh, Dan Loves Adobe. That's my personal one. So tag both of us. Um, also on Instagram, I am Bring Your Own Laptop. Yeah, that's the end. Um, I never know what to do with these end parts. It's kind of what I, yeah, I like to just keep talking until I run out of things to talk about. And we get to that awkward bit where I just stare at the camera for a while. I'll wave though. We're at that point. <laughs> Bye now. Hope to see you in another course. I'll keep waving for a while.